Welcome back, everyone. It's time for us to come back to Magic the Gathering Arena. It has been literally two years. The last set we did was War of the Spark. That was two years ago, which means we are completely out of standard again. Which is great, because the plan was to get into standard. Uh, but then we just stopped, because I guess I got tired of playing. So, we're back! And hopefully we stick around this time. I The reason why I quit is because I went on tilt for like a week. I'm like, okay, we're good. Forget it. I'm done. I can't. I can't. And we're back, and we're going to try to do this again, and see if I can learn to be okay with losing. So, the plan here is we're going to open up 99 card packs. 99 packs. And then in the future, I'll probably do some drafting and maybe sealed. I don't know if I'm good enough for sealed, but we can definitely do drafting, because I have a lot of gold. And I had a lot of gems. And have fun doing that, and also because I'm going to go out and mastery. By the way, I also... Got a bunch of packs for Jinx so that they can also play this with me. So we can do some decks and have fun playing each other. Since you can play this on the phone now, so that'd be good. Let's go ahead and do the packs. By the way, did you know there's a lot of codes in this game? So, I used all the codes and I just got a bunch of card packs. I get a feeling half of these aren't gonna... I'm just gonna open them just cause. Or just have them for no good reason. Uh, I should at least open the ones that are still in standard. But let's go ahead and open Strixhaven. 99! Before we get started, make your bets. How many Mythics do you think we're going to get? How many Rares do you think we're going to get? Just out of 99 packs, just make your guess. Sure, the statistics, but do statistics really succeed? I don't know. So, we're going in here blind. I don't know anything about this. It's relearning the game, basically. Let's see what kind of decks we could have in mind. That's the real thing, is just seeing organically what ideas you have for decks and then reading up on everyone's stuff and then seeing what decks you get out of out of those ideas too so let's get started make your picks make your bets and go okay game what the hell apparently couldn't handle all that okay pack number one a wild card so arcane subtraction target creature gets zip minus four minus zero until end of turn Learn! So, Learn's the new mechanic. You may reveal a lesson card you're, you own from outside the game and put it into your hand or discard a card to draw a card. So, Learn is interesting. So, they made the sideboard smaller in best of ones to like 7 or 8 cards instead of the usual 15 in best of ones only. In best of threes, you still get the 15. Because of Learn, they made it that way for best of ones. So, you can't just be really broken about it. So that's a new mechanic, and there you go, make a creature minus 4, 0, which means you can just kill something. That'd be really good. And you get another card out of it. Jeez. That's not bad. Or you can just discard and draw a card if you want to just cycle through and find something you want. Sudden Breakthrough. So these are all like skill, uh, school stuff, right? Because that's the shtick of this step. Instant. Target creature gets plus 2, plus 0, and gains first strike until end of turn. Create a treasure token. Treasure token? Uh, you... you... Tap it to add one color, uh, 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 one of any color. Oh, that's not bad. I like it, so... This will keep a creature alive for a turn, like if you're fighting something, first strike, you'll kill him. And then you get an extra mon out of it, so... That's extremely good value as far as I know. I think there was a one mon or a two mon card that gave you basically plus two, zero before, and... What was it fast strike or whatever it's called? Next one, teach example. Instant. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So this is setting up for your next card. Okay, so... Copy that spell. You may choose new target. So basically, you do this, and it just lets you do double cast something. That's all it is. Just double cast your next spell. So you can do this and double cast this if you're dealing with two big things, or just make one big thing way weaker. Like you're fighting an eight-something monster. Or you can just give yourself a plus four and then you get two extra mana. That'd be nice. So that'd be cool. Basically pays for itself with that. Ruth, the uh, Mercurial Artist. Is that her? I think that's her. Okay. Uh, legendary creature who is uh, uncommon. Okay. Two cost. Return Ruth, the uh, Mercurial Artist to its owner's hand. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose a new targets for the copy. You control. Okay. Magic crafts plus copy effects, live the dream. So, you may choose new target. So this is just another 
copy thing. There's a lot of copies. Okay, so magic's gonna go off in this. Like, red and blue's gonna go off in this set, apparently. That's what it looks like. Spell you control. So that's in your hand, right? When it says you control? Or is it something you're... Control means something you're casting. That just makes the thing you're casting better. What is this? Adventurous Impulse. And also it looks different. What the hell? Look at the top three cards of your, of your... Oh no, this is that card, isn't it? So there's these cards. That's what that symbol is. So this is something that's not Strixhaven. This is the other thing. Well, you've cast on the stack. Okay, so it's on the stack kind of thing. Okay. So this is something I don't know if we should pay attention to these cards. Where you get these cards that are be good and historic, right? That these are historic cards? Because this isn't a Strixhaven card, right? Yeah. The fancy cards are magic archive cards. So is it even worth looking at these? Like they're playable and limited and historic, so I probably don't care about this because they're not for standard, so I don't care. Let's go over here to Fracture. Destroy target artifact enchantment or planeswalker. That's just good. You just need to be Orzov. So black and white and just F your artifact, F your enchantment, F your planeswalker. I don't, I want at least one of these if I'm running Orzov. Let's go ahead and see what this is. But yeah. Sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. From your graveyard. Draconic Intervention deals X damage to each non-dragon creature. X is the exiled card's mana value. If a creature dealt damage this way, it would die this turn. Exile it instead. Exile Draconic Intervention. So, this is just, you really, really want to kill something card. So, they're fun card. Look, at, so this is a fun card, but it won't be a standard. And I'm going to mostly play standard, so... Because Historic is just BS out the A. Like, it's just going to be BS fighting. And I do not like the BS fighting. Um, So this is just a you really want to kill a creature card. It's a wipe. Oh! Target... Wait, let me reread that. Each... Oh, to each! Each. Okay, so this is a wipe. As additional... Count. Okay, so... But the damage is the card you exiled. Okay, so... Just need to have some really high damage card... Just high mana cost card in your in your graveyard. And kablam! It's gonna destroy everything. So this is the wipe. So red gets a wipe. So keep that in mind. Alright. Yeah, board up. Hey, you're in straight. So it's a board wipe card uh, against non-dragons. Which means there has to be some dragons in this set. Alright, let's open another one. That's one down, 98 to go. Gimme. Okay, so we've got Arrogant Poet. Whenever Arrogant Poet attacks, you pay two life. If you do, it gains flying into a turn. Alright. I guess if I'm going to rush down, this is the way to go as Arrogant Poet. Over here. Or you just don't even use and just have a 2-1 for 2. Stonebound Mentor. Creature uh, Spirit Advisor. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, scry one. Okay, so you could use this with Draconic because you're going to have something leave your graveyard. Red and white's Boros, right? Uh, whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, scry one. Or uh, three costs for three. Okay. Fractal Summoning. I'm seeing a lot of, um, by the way, a lot of color mixing here. Fractal Summoning! Create a 0, zero green and blue fractal creature token. Put X, 1-1 one, one counters on it. So just, alright, 2 and then just through all your mana. Just make it really strong. So this is good for any time, basically, after you get to 3. So you can have, like, uh, a blocker or you can just have a big beast later on late game. Okay. So Golgari has a life gain theme this time, so you can afford to lose life. Okay. Yeah, there it is, life link. Oh, that's Orzhov. Uh, so well, you can put this with Golgari. It's black. Okay, so over here, spirit summoning. So it looks like there's some summonings going on here. Just making creatures up in here. All right. So this is a red white though. Create a three two red and white spirit creature token. Oh, it's a sorcery, so you could make two of these. You like the you could do the copy stuff to have more than one of these summoned. So you could combo this with that other card, but that was a red and blue, I think. So or maybe it was a red card. 
I guess you're gonna have to do like shards, like red, blue, and white to utilize some of these other summons, maybe. Killian, Ink Duelist. Killian sounds familiar. Lifelink Menace. Spells you cast that target uh, creature cost two less to cast. Menace means they can only be locked by two. Yeah, okay. So this guy's pretty useful. I gotta see what other what the black and white cards are coming up, but making two less to, to cast on creatures? That sounds nice. Solve the equation. Search your library for an instant or sorcery card to reveal it. Put it into your hand, then shuffle. Alright. Alright, okay. Sideboard that. Oh, that's not a lesson. So you just uh, cast this and do, try to do things so you can take advantage of this. Every spell and source, every sorcery I look at, I'm like, how can I take advantage of it? By the way, this is a lesson card, so you can put this in the sideboard for learn. So is this one. All right. Sorcery, you may uh, pay an additional... Oh, no, no, no. You may, you may pay three and a green instead of five and a green for uh, to pay this spell's mana cost. Okay, why? Search your library for up to four basic land cards and reveal them. Put one of them onto the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control. Well, if you paid the cheaper cost. Put two of them onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into your hand, then shuffle. So for six mana, you get to have just more mana? So, I guess you would do this so you can make this. Like, right? Just get a crap ton more mana so you can make something like a fractal. Because at this point, you got six mana. Do you need that much more mana? I guess for X's. Oh, green has cards that care about land this time? Okay, let's see what this rare is. Dispark. Ah, oh, hey, Dispark. I remember this one. Unfortunately, it's a freaking this. Hmm. Not a fan. Oh, hey, there's Killian quoting this. Alright. Not happy to get rares for this set. That's not the set I'm playing. Alright. Weird choice. Next one. Another rare. Leech Fanatic. As long as it's your turn, Leech Fanatic has lifelink. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm just solid 2-2. Two, two. I'm cool with that one. Six. Cogs were Cogwork Archivist. Reach means you can hit the air. Okay. For two on a tap, put target card from graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. Ooh, okay. So that might be something for Golgari. Teach by example, we already didn't see that one. Essence Infusion. Put two one one counters on target creature. It gains lifelink until end of turn. Yeah, okay, I'm liking all this lifelink. Also, we're gonna get four of these easily. I feel like any caster deck, like any red or blue deck, you're going to want these probably. Start from scratch. It's a lesson. Oh yeah, the corner tells you if it's a lesson card, like in the top left. Choose one. Start from scratch, deals one damage to any target, or destroy a target artifact. Okay. Alright. Seems like a solid card you want to have on your sideboard. Over here, mascot interception. This spell costs three less to cast if it targets a uh, creature token. So just one. What does it do? Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains plus two, zero, and gains haste until end of turn. Well... Oh, if it targets a token. Not, not a creature, but a token. So, a summon. Why is Birdman's face? It's just a bird. So... So what they mean is, yeah, it's it was one of those summons, right? Like, uh, I already forgot what they were called just now. But if it was one of the summons, it would be for one cost. Of, but if it's just a creature, it'd be a four cost. And then you just put it under your control. It's got haste and two damage. So, yeah. If your enemy, if your opponent has something big, you can do work with it. Okay. Sedgemore Witch. Uh, Menace, Ward, Pay 3 Life. Whenever a, a permanent with ward becomes a target of a spell or opponent control, counter it unless that player pays the ward cost. Oh, so in order to target the Sedgemore Witch, they must pay three life. 
if I'm reading that correctly. And she also has Menace, so you got to target it with two creatures. It also has Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or motorcycle, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a one-one black green pest creature token with. When this creature dies, you gain one life. So, cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell. So you want to just cast a lot of spells while she's out. Okay. And that's how you get more life. And also, it's a 3-2 menace, so they have to pay 3 to target her, or they have to hit her with 2 things if I ever even attack with her. So this, they're putting a lot of tricks into this deck, which I guess makes sense since it's a school thing, right? I like this card, though. I want to have this card in my deck for sure. Open up. What we got? Weather the storm. You gain 3 life. Storm. I'm not liking I'm getting rares of things I'm not going to be able to play. Let's get another one. What I mean by this, I don't care about historic. That's what I mean. I want to play standard. Okay, let's see here. Archway Commons. Archway Commons enters the battlefield tap. When Archway Commons enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you pay one. Okay. Add one mod of any color. So, okay, that's why. So, any color is always useful. Bayou Groff. That's a big dog. As initial cost to pass this spell, sacrifice a creature, or pay three mana. So, it's either a five cost, or you can sacrifice a creature, like some little one one or something. To get a five four? So you can get a turn two five four. What's limited again, Jinx? So you can get a turn one five four. I mean, turn two five four. You just have to summon something the first turn. So you would get like an elf. So you bring in an elf, if there's elves in this. Something, just a one cost creature. And then sacrifice it, and now you've got yourself a freaking 5-4 at turn 2? That's scary. Oh, so limited is draft. Okay, so you get them in drafting. I, oh, so I have to learn how to use them in drafting then. Okay, I guess I have to read them. Uh, exhilarating elocution. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature you control. Other creatures you control get 1-1 one, one, and 2 on a turn. That sounds really nice if you're going wide, right? Like, you just... You got a bunch of creatures. They're going to do a lot of work for her for, for, ah, for 4 mana. Return post collar. Jesus. 6 mana. Flying. It's a 4-2. When it's the battlefield return, target spirit, instant, or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, that's why. You get to cast something really good again for 6 mana. It gets back in your hand, so you can just cast it again. All right. Karok Wrangler. What we got here? Magecraft. So it's a 3-3 for 5. Magecraft. Whenever you cast a copy on instant, it's a, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. On target creature you control. So it doesn't have to go on the Wrangler. It can go on someone else. Nice. For 4, blue or green. That's another fractal. When Mastination Sage enters the battlefield, create a 0, zero green uh, blue fractal token. Put XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Ooh, so you can get a pretty nice fractal. So you get a 2-2 two, two, and who knows, like up to maybe a 6-6 six, six or a 7-7. Seven, seven, no, 6-6, six, 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 because you're going to use this. You can get up to a 6-6, six, six, so for 4 you get up to like 8. Oh yeah, Golgar has spawn tokens, so you could spawn a token. Yeah, and then Golgar takes advantage of this. Ooh, yeah, Golgar sounds nice with that. Stone Rain, destroy target land. No, I do enjoy destroying lands. Like, that's when you make stupid decks. I like a land destroyer deck. Like, it can work out against certain decks, and it's hilarious. But other decks just make it not work, and that's, well, what happens when you do goofy decks. Do another one. Land Destroyer can be useful if your opponent's just not drawing land. Oh, we got this one again, so we can read it this time. Bondrix, Pledge Mage. That's a 2-2 two, two for 3. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or a sorcery spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Quandrix. It makes sense to me if Simic's just going to get stronger from things. So yeah, plus 1-1 one, one when you cast spells? Okay. Inkling Summoning. Inklings! Okay. Create a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. A 2-1 flyer for three. All right. Yeah. Looks like a lot of summons are, are these le lesson cards, aren't they? 
I already did that one. Tome Shredder. T2 haste for three. Tap exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Put 1-1 one, one counter on Tomb Shredder. And there's some other card that likes it when you do that too. So, okay. I gotta remember what those other cards are. There's probably some synergy to that. Maelstrom Muse. Flying. Whenever Maelstrom Muse attacks the next instant or sorcery spell you cast, this turn uh, costs X less to cast. When her X is then power as this ability resolves. And we will. Okay, so if you buff it up, it makes a lot of other cards cheaper. All right. Cool. So let's read Adventurer's Impulse this time. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or target, uh, a creature or land card from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. So that could be useful. Hello, we got ourselves a mythic. Galazeth Prismari, three four 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 flying. Uh, when Galzareth Prismari enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Treasure tokens are you just get one of any mana color. Any artifacts you control have add one mana. Spend this mana only to cast an instant or artifact. Uh, read that again. Artifacts you control have tap. Add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast instant sorcery spell. So if you just have artifacts. Besides the treasure token. Well, actually, no. You could tap it for that instead of the sacrifice, huh? So with uh, Galazeth Prismari, any treasure tokens you have could be just utilized over and over again. Adventurous Impact is standard according to Jinx. So that's good. Okay. Yeah, my dog ate my homework as Tom Shredder. So basically, you want this guy. You want this dragon. I don't know if it's a lady. You want this dragon uh, if you're doing treasures. Because then you can have a crap ton of mana to just cast like crazy. That is my interpretation of this card. And so, yeah, I want that. What do we got? Pest summoning. Another lesson. So it looks like summons are, are going to be in the lessons. Create two one one black Green, uh, black and green pest tokens. When this creature dies, you gain one life. Yeah, looks like you're gonna just want to go hand with Golgari with these things. Like, see what you can do with them. Go white as crap. Lane line invocation. Five and a green. Create zero zero. Uh, oh, it's the fractal. So this fractal though is there. It is plus one plus one on the number of lands you control. So. Have a crap ton of lands. You're going to have at least six lands at this point. So at least you get a 6-6. Six, six. Unless there's some cards that give you extra mana. Here eight. One and a blue. Look at the top car two cards of your library. Put any number of them back into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library. In any order, draw a card. Why would blue want to put cards in the in the graveyard? Was there... I know... Oh, actually, red th does things to take cards out of the graveyard. The question is, does blue have anything that would care? I guess we need more cards to see. Infuse with Vitality, Golgari. One black, one green. Until end of turn, target creature gains death touch, and when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. You gain two life. So basically, it just lets you keep your blocker. So if you block with whatever, this will let you still have it. Like, maybe you could have an important creature, but you need to block with it, and you can keep it alive by doing this. Because it kills and comes back. It lets you throw a card away and have it come back. Spell Satchel. Uh, here's an artifact. Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell... Put a book counter on Spell Satchel. Remove a book counter to get one uh, mana. For three mana, remove three book counters from and draw a card. Okay, so it's a way to get card draw or get extra mana. Okay. Snow Day. Tap up the two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during the... Blue always does this. 
Okay, so yeah, you just tap two of your opponent's cards, but for six? Jeez. Four and two blues. Draw two cards and discard a card. I guess, yeah, unless you get ahead in cards and then you have two creatures the opponent can't use. So this will allow you to just beat someone up a little bit, but also just get more cards and such. Beachings of the Archaics. If an opponent has more cards in hand than you, draw two cards. Draw three cards instead if an opponent has at least four more cards in, their, in hand than you. That's a way to just have more cards. All right, after you've been going spell crazy. So you definitely want this card if you, get, you got a lot of spells. You just keep doing things. Tendrils of Agony! Target player loses two life, you gain two life, and Storm! So Storm is a mechanic that I don't understand. Let's see here. When you cast the spell, copy it for each spell cast before it this turn. May choose new targets for the copies. So if a bunch of things got cast, then I do this, then I just get to cast this a bunch? I forget when Storm was a thing. Storm was a while ago. Water, drink. Storm decks, you play a lot of cheaper free spells. Followed by Trent Tendrils for the kill. Okay, so it was a very old mechanic. Let's go. So they're bringing Storm back, sort of, for Historic. Learn! Cram session. You gain four life and you learn. Alright, we've seen plenty of interesting learn cards. Quandrix. Yeah, I want more Quandrix. That could be useful because this is your merfolk right here. Novice Dissector. For one, sacrifice another creature. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Activate only as a sorcery. So this activates sorcery things. So you would just do, yeah, you're, he's showing you exactly what you would do. You would do it to your pests. You'd sacrifice a pest and put its 1-1 one, one on something else, basically. Yeah, that's exactly what the flavor text is. You're extracting the venom glands, the acid sac, and the next step is meeting more. Okay. Stonebound Mentor. Oh, we got that one. Okay, let's see here. Prismari Apprentice? I don't think we've seen this one yet. Whenever you cast a... Uh, okay. Whenever you magecraft... Prismari Apprentice can't be blocked that turn, and the spell has five mana or more cost, put a plus one plus one on the Apprentice. So it's it's a red and a blue to cast this, so early game is just there to be a, just do some minor damage, and then later on it allows you just make it chip in more damage. Clever Lumin Luminancer? Magecraft, plus two plus two to end a turn, it's a zero one. Well, it becomes a 2-3 temporarily when you cast. But, alright. Jeez, okay, let's see here. Claim the Firstborn. Don't know if it's standard. Jinx, have to tell me. Gain control of target creature with mana 3 value or less until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Oh, it's a 1 red cost. So it's just like, alright, I get to use it for my turn, and that's it. So, But it's, it's only for cheap things. Okay. That's why it's a Firstborn, because the Firstborns are early game cards. Our Earlyborn creatures, the first ones to come in. They're never going to be higher than 3 value, I figure, for 1 mana. And we got ourselves a rare, X Blue. If it's a 1, you scry, then draw a card. If it's 2, choose a player. They return a creature they control to its owner's hand. So it's an unsummoned for two. It's a sorcery, though, not an instant. For three and a blue, you get a 4-4 four, four blue-red creature. Oh, there it is. So for five mana, for four and a blue, you get to do all of the above. So if you need a card, you get to do it. Like So this is the card that people will like, because you got a lot of options here. If you need to use it early, you need to unsummon something early, you can. Or if you need a card early, you can. If you need a creature, you can. Or, if you wait till late game, you get to do a bunch of things! It's called multiple choice, that's perfect. Alright. Nice play on that one. Definitely like this card. I think I want this card for sure on a blue deck for sure. What we got? 
Wild card. Okay, so spectral, Spectacle Mage. So there's just owl people in this game? Alright. In this one? The Bird Shaman, one blue and a red. Uh, flying. Instant and sorcery spells you cast with uh, mana value 5 or greater costs 1 less to cast. So it just makes things cheaper. Okay. A 2-2 two -two flyer makes things cheaper. So chip in some damage. Keep it alive so you can just do some cheaper casting. Pillar Drop Warden. Reach. Yeah, he's tall enough. 1-5 for a th uh, 3 and a red. 2 and tap. You sacrifice it. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Activate only as a sorcery. So for six mana, or just you don't want to use it as a wall anymore, you get a sorcery. I mean, you get an instant of sorcery back. Okay, so early game wall. Well, not really that early. It's a four cost, but just you got a wall. And then if you don't want to use a wall anymore, you want to spell, then there you go. Shock, the two, the two damage for one card. I assume this is standard. There's no way shock isn't standard. Because this is just a red card that always shows up. Lorehold Apprentice. Magecraft. So it's a 2-2 two -two for red and white. Magecraft gives it... On turn to turn, spirit creatures you control gain... Tap. This creature deals one damage to each opponent. Alright. Spirit creatures. Spirit creatures is the, is the key thing. So you got a spirit dwarf here. Probably there's a bunch of other spirit things, so if you can go wide with spirits, then they become a threat. Like, yeah, this guy just becomes a wall that also is a threat if you tap it. Okay. Efreet Flame Painter. The rare double strike. Oh yeah, we only have one mythic so far. Double strike. Whenever Efreet Flame Painter deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target instant or sorcery from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. And if we put in the graveyard, you exile it instead. It double strikes too. So you get to cast two spells. I feel like shock is always going to forever be in standard. Um, so you get to cast two spells. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want this in my in my red deck. Hello, heck yeah. Okay, yeah, I want that. All right, number nine. Enthusiastic study. Hey, can anyone check really quick how many cards there are in this set? I'm actually curious how much of the set we're going to get, right? Oops, clicked on the wrong thing. Oh, well, that got revealed. No, 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 no. All right, well, we'll find them again later. Just clicking anywhere, just, all right. I accidentally clicked off. Well... We'll read those again eventually. I'm sure we'll find them again. Well, we already got the Draconic before, so we know that one. Is. Biomathematician. When Biomathematician enters the battlefield, create a 0-0... Zero, zero, okay. For each fractal you control... So you need to have more fractals before you cast this one. 275. Jeez. So statistically speaking, out of 99 times... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... We're going to get around 800 cards. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Dual, dual, dual. Okay, totally dual. Are we getting 800? Yeah, we're getting 800. Yeah, okay. Uh, Biomathematician. So, this is only good if you have other fractals already out. Because at this point, for three mana, you're going to get a 2-2 two, two, another 1-1. One, one. But if you do it later on... No, I'm reading that wrong. So... He'll, he'll create a 1-1 one, one fractal, and then if you have other fractals, it'll make them stronger. So you can use this guy early, or you can use him later, and he still has some value to him if you have a bunch of fractals. Ageless Guardian. A 1-4 a spirit, by the way, it's a spirit, now that we know spirits are going to be important. A 1-4 spirit, so it's just a wall for two. That's a nice wall for two. A 1-4 wall? Damn. You have confidence. When you cast this spell, copy it for... Each other instant uh, sorcery spell you've cast this turn, you may choose new targets for the copies. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature, it gains Vigilance until end of turn. Vigilance is it doesn't tap uh, when it attacks. So that's nice. So, 
If I'm reading Show of Confidence correctly, that means you want to cast this with other things, because then you get copies of those other things. When you cast this over, you've cast. So you want to cast everything else first, then Show of Confidence. So the showing confidence is on top of the stack, and then all that happens, or just just remember those things got cast, then you do this, and then all those happen too. I don't know how Arena's gonna activate that, but we'll see when we play it. Eliminate history. It's a spirit. Discard any number of cards. So it's a two red, two two red. Discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. Then, if there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, create a three two, red white spirit token. All right, it's a way to just get rid of cards that you're not gonna, you don't feel like using this time, or putting cards in your graveyard to use with like the freaking Ifrit uh, Flame Painter. So that's cool. All right, yeah. So you have you don't have a, you don't have a problem discarding cards when you're red if you have that Flame Painter. So that's cool. You want to have more than one of them as insurance. Time warp. Oh god, they brought back time warp. Then time warp gets banned all the time. What? All right, time warp's back. Target player takes an extra turn after this one. Oof. Here's all I know. If I get time warp in draft, in limited, I'm automatically going blue. I don't... How do you not utilize this card? The freaking mythic. That's our second mythic so far. That's ten cards in. Ten? Uh, next is if time was banned, time warp was not. Which means, I don't know the difference right now between Nexus of Time and Time War. Um, I'll listen to the same thing. All I know is I would want to utilize this card for sure. Although it is 5 mana, so you gotta have a lot of mana to be able to utilize it. Unless you can do something where you use it from Graveyard or something. So 10 in, we've gotten 2 uh, Mythics. And we've gotten more than... We've gotten a few rares on the side, so I have not been keeping track of the rares. Well, well, we'll know at the end of this whole thing how many rares we got and how many mythics we got. Because we can just look up our profile, our decks, and see how many cards we got in our pack. Uh, in our stack of cards. Library. In our library. That's the word. The 10 in. Let's keep going. Hunt for specimens. Create a 1 1 pest. All right, and you get learn as well. So for two, you get to do learn. All right. Yeah, you get a one-one pass and learn. Yeah, it's not bad. Two say or adept. So it's a one and a blue, and for one and a blue, you can tap and you draw a card and discard a card. Okay. What's that card again? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, what this uh, mechanic is called, where it's draw a card, discard a card. Bismari, Pledge Mage, uh, Defender, Magecraft, whenever you cast an instant or... Okay, whenever you Magecraft, it cannot be defended. Uh, it didn't... Can attack this turn as though it didn't have a defender. Yes, so it can't be blocked. I'm reading that wrong. Okay. This creature can attack because it has defender, which means it can only defend. That's how I'm reading it wrong. So it's a 2 cost 3-3 three, three, that's a defender. And whenever Magecraft happens, it can attack. Decisive Benial. Choose one. Okay. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So it's a fight card. Or counter target non-creature spell unless it's controller pays three. So make some card even more expensive. So if you know they use like all their mana but two, you can do this and they don't get to use it. This is a counter. Straight up counter. Test of Talents. Target, uh, counter target instant or sorcery spell. Search this controller's graveyard hand. And, and library for any number of cards with the same name as that spell and exile them. Wow! That player shuffles then draws a card for each card exiled from her hand this way. So if your opponent has just some really good instant or sorcery, you just say, nah. <laughs> and they lose all, ver they lose however many copies of that card. They get, they get cards for it, but still they lose however many copies of that card. So if they got like four of a really good spell, they don't get to use it at all. That's cool. 
This is a way to counter red with their graveyard mechanics, I guess. I think. And maybe other ones who utilize the graveyard, or just really good spells. Really good instants or sorcerers. I get a rare wild card. Alright. Keep in mind we got a rare wild card when we count how many rares we got. And destruction? Oh, that's what they're- okay. Then breakthrough... Introduction to Annihilation. It's a lesson. Exile target, non-land permanent. Its controller draws a card. Exile target, non-land permanent. Its controller draws a card. So you just... It's a 5 cost. Okay. So it's just... It gets rid of something, but they get something out of it, too. Moldering Karak. Trample, lifelink, 3-3 three, three for 4. 2, a black and a green. But it's a trample lifelink, so that's nice. You want to make it tall. Uh, Squirrel? Scurried Colony? A 2-2 two, two with reach? Gets 2-2 two, two, plus 2-2 two, two as long as you control 8 or more lands. So, it's an okay early game creature, but it's a way good late game creature as a 4-4. Four, four. No day. Wormhole Serpent! Wow, a 3-5 deck for 4. Uh, so it's a 4 and a 1 blue. And with an additional 3 and a blue later, you can make that a creature can't be blocked. So you can make itself not blockable or something else. Sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. This is Duress. That player discards that card. Thing is, you get to see their hand. This has a lot of value to it. For one black, you get to see their hand and you get to make them discard something. Oh, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh card? Well, uh, the Chain Destruction. So, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of really good green-black. I feel like they're making up for Golgari and Ravnica being bit terrible. Bayful Mastery. You may put a one and a black rather... Pay one and a black rather than pay the whole cost. So, three and a black. If it's one and a black... An opponent draws a card, exile target, creature, or planeswalker. Okay, so for cheap, your opponent gets to draw a card. For the full price, you just exile a target, creature, or planeswalker. So that's not bad. Baleful Mastery, that, that feels like good insurance to have. I want this card for sure. I feel like you want to have a couple of counters in your, in your deck. Like a, couple, a couple just F this card in your deck, no matter what you're playing. And so that'd be a good one to have. Blood Age General. It's a spirit warrior, so it looks like red's running spirits. I forget. Yeah, there it is. Tap. Attacking spirits get plus one zero until end of turn, so that'd be nice. Making your spirit stronger, like your one to five, you can turn into a two five. Wither Bloom Pledge Mage. Tree Folk Warlock. Three and two additional black green. Magecraft. Whenever Magecraft happens, you get a you get you gain one life, and it's a five five. 5-5 five, five for 5 and that? That seems good value to me. Oh, here's a new land. Where they bloom campus and is a battlefield tapped. You add a black and a red. Oh, that's nice. For 4 and tap, you get a scry. Okay, that's not bad at all. Practical research. 3, blue, and red. Draw 4 cards and discard 2 cards unless you discard an instant or sorcery card. Okay, so it's either discard two or one card. That doesn't seem bad. Gets you ahead. Also, because you're discarding and you're doing red and blue, you're going to utilize the graveyard still, so... That's something to keep in mind. And also, you can just graveyard this card back out, too. I think you can graveyard instances and not just... Uh, i got to double-check the, the Flame Painter if it's... Instances and sorceries or just instances? I mean, just sorceries. And the size of denial. Divine Gambit. Exile target, artifact, creature, or enchantment in opponent controls. That player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. So. Is that worth? Oh, that's why it's a gambit. That's why it's a gambit. Because you're going to get rid of something they have, and you have to hope they don't put something better down. I don't know if I want to use that card. 
another rare wild card. So two wild cards. Next! Now right now we're being very slow, but later on, once we've gotten everything pretty much, we'll be a lot faster as we read. Greek a moment. Oh, it's this girl again. Draw two cards. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. All right. That's not bad. For four, you get to put down, I assume, just an additional land and uh, draw two cards. And there could be a land from one of those two cards. Dragon's Approach. Another dragon thing in red. Deals three. It's, so it's two and a red. Deals three damage to each opponent. You may exile Dragon's Approach and four cards named Dragon's Approach from your gra graveyard. If you do, search your library for a dragon creature card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. A deck can have any number of cards named Dragon's Approach. Okay. So this is one of those cards where you get to have limitless cards. All right. And with this, so you, what do you do? You just only have Dragon's Approach and Dragons? Is that your full deck? Is that your deck? Is Dragon's Approach and Dragons? I guess that's your deck. Or at least try to make a deck around that. I'd try to make one to see how it works. Server Quill, same idea. You get the Scry. So if you have these schools, you can you get a Scry. Okay. So for sure you want to have a couple of these. At least one, maybe two. Thunderous Orator. Vigilance, so it doesn't tap when he attacks. When he attacks, he gains flying until end of turn if you control a creature of flying. Okay, so I have to have another creature of flying. Same is true with all the other effects. What? So if you have another creature with indestructible, he's indestructible. Life Link Menace, all those things. So Thunderous Orator is ridiculous. So, if I can just get an indestructible and like... So you want to have just other creatures. You want to have an indestructible creature, a lifelink creature, whatever. And then he can just do whatever he wants. He just gets to do whatever he wants. Okay. Thunderstar Warrior is a curious card that you could try to build something around. Master Symmetrist. Reach. A 4-4 with Reach. It's 2 and 3 and 2 red. Uh, green. Whenever creature control with power equal to its toughness attacks, he gains Trammel Tone in turn. So this thing has trample and reach, unless you give it like an uneven gain. Wow, and adventurous impulse. We have a third one of these now. Ooh, what do we got? So this is a flip card. Things was talking about these flip cards. I've never had these before. Yanni, Dean of Substance, or Ibrahim, Dean of Theory. Legendary creature, elf druid, or legendary bird wizard. Okay. So for a green and two of mana, or two and two blue, so for the green side, exile the top card from your library. If it's a land card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, put a study counter on it. For four and a green, create a fractal uh, counter on it, for, and it gets plus one, plus one for each different mana value among non-land cards you own in exile with study counters on them. That sounds complicated. Okay, what? <laughs> it does what? 1-1 one, one counter for each different mana value among... So just, if I exile a bunch of cards. So if I exile a 1 mana and I exile a 2 mana, I exile a 3 mana. I think that's my understanding here. So as long as there's different numbers exiled, then I'm good. And so I'd want to scry first, I guess? Yeah, so I'd want to scry first, I guess, so that I know what I'm exiling. Okay, and then you can make a kind of strong fractal. Well, the thing is, at this point, yeah, once you have enough variance in the study cards, because it doesn't get rid of the count the study counters, you can make a bunch of really good fractals for with a 2-2 two -two or 5 mana. Look at the other guy. Flying. X, two blue, tap, exile the top X cards of your library and put a study counter on each of them. Then you may put a card you own in exile 
with a study counter on it into your hand. Okay, question. Um... Can you just switch to the different professors as you go? Can you just pay two and a grain and go back to Kiana? Kiane? Is that how this works? Or you can only be this one side? Because he doesn't sound that useful unless you can utilize the druid after. Okay, so then what the balls? Why would you exile all these cards? Oh, okay, I was reading it wrong. My reading comprehension is getting worse with age. Then you may put a card you own in exile with a study counter on it into your hand. Oh god, okay. So you're exiling cards and then unexiling cards. Top X cards of your library and put a study counter on each of them. Then you put, may put a card of your own in exile with a study counter on it into your hand. Oh, if I count, if I cast a second counter copy, I can have both of these cards. Okay. So you're exiling cards, and then you're also pulling them back out of exile. Uh, with the blue side. That seems a little too complicated for me. Like, it can be useful. But you could also end up exiling cards that you're just never going to use. I don't... Mm. Yeah, it exiles cards and immediately brings a card back. So I guess you're exiling, looking for a specific card to win the game kind of thing. Like, I guess you have a specific combo you want to do to win the game, and so you're exiling to get those cards. That's my best guess to understand that one. Like, you're trying to... Or you need a specific card to save your ass, so you're trying to get it through exiling. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's complicated. This set is complicated. Charge through! Alright. Target creature gains trample to end a turn, draw a card. Okay, that's not bad. Feel like you're just doing this with a card draw more than anything. Well, you're doing it for both those things. But who doesn't like card draw? Pilgrim of the Ages. When Pilgrim of the Ages enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. It's a, it's a two white for a two one. For six money, you can put it from the graveyard back into your hand, as if it was a freaking zombie card. What? Like, so, this is a way... Six mana, though. You get to have this again. Well, you're going to have yourselves a bunch of planes with this card, eventually. Six mana, get it back from the ground into your hand. All right. It's something to do late game. You just can build little blockers with these things. Biblioplex assist... It's still six cost. Biblioplex assistant. Oh, it's also spirits. So you can do red white with this. You can do borrows with it. Biblioplex assistant. Flying to one for four mana. When assistant enters the battlefield, put up to one target instant or sorcery card from your jury on top of your library. So it's a way to get cards back. All right. So you want this with your red and white. I mean, your red and blues or whites. Another Cyber Quill Campus. We've got two of these now. Flunk. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is seven minus number of cards in that creature's controller's hand. So if they have a full hand, then does nothing. Okay. But if they don't have that many cards, you can screw over a creature pretty good. Like, early game, this might you might be able to utilize it well. Late game, maybe? I don't know. It depends on how the game's going. Real of possibility, one in a red. As an additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card. Draw two cards. Alright. Leonin Lightscribe. Magecraft gives you plus one, plus one time to turn. Oh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So everybody on your side. And this is a 2-2 two -two for a one and a white. That's not bad. Not bad. You'll be a bit of a threat with this card for sure. At all times, you'll be annoying with that. So yeah, this set's going to really care about casting spells, of course. 
Oh, okay, Elemental Masterpiece. What? Create two, four, four blue and red elemental tokens. Uh, creature tokens for five and a blue and a red, so it's seven costs to do that. And you can also spend a blue, uh, a blue red, blue red to discard elemental masterpiece and create a treasure token. Wait, this is this is a sorcery though, so. Is that just a different cost you can pay? So I can pay for seven or I can pay for two and get a different thing. I think that's my understanding from reading it. Okay, so early game you can ditch it for treasure or late game you can have two four fours. Okay, so it's versatile. Eager first year. T2, one and a white. Also, it's interesting, you can tell there's like a story being told with some of these cards for certain characters. Whenever, okay, so it's a 2-2 two, two for 1 and white. Whenever you cast a spell or a sorcery, this card will get plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn with Magecraft. So, little threat. Reflective Golem for 3! It's a 2-3 three for 3. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Reflective Golem, you may pay 2. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for that copy. So, you can buff up Golem and then buff something else up for another two. Alright. Blind Gambit. Braid of Outburst. Jesus Christ. For three, two blue, and two red. So, very much a lot of mana. Oh, it's just like Masterpiece. It deals five damage to any target, and you can look at the top five cards of your library and put one of them into your hand and the rest at the bottom of the library in random order. Or for cheaper, you can make it to uh, a treasure. So, there's... Interesting that they have these, as you can do for cheaper. For two, get a treasure. You just don't want to have this card. Also, because then you just put it in your in your graveyard, and you can use it from its from the graveyard instead. So that's the thing as well. You can use it from the graveyard. Oh huh, yeah. So you dump it, then use it from the graveyard, or you just cast it and cast it again from the graveyard. Ooh, that's interesting. Hello, what are you? Wandering, archaic, rare. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay two. If they don't, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So it's a 4-4 four, 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 5. And whenever your opponent casts an instant or sorcery, if they don't pay an additional two, you get to copy it. Now the other side's a sorcery. For three... Each player looks at the top five cards of the library and may reveal a land card and or instant or sorcery card from among them. Each player puts the cards they revealed this way into their hand and the rest in the bottom of the library in random order. Each player gains three life. Hmm. That's a bit of a gamble. You could do it if you're looking for something specific. I think I'd rather have the Avatar. I'd rather have the Avatar. I would rather have the Avatar. I guess you would do... Explore the Vast Lands if there's a specific card you really want. And you know you, you can win with it or something? Because you're also giving your opponent a chance to give you some trouble. Because each player does this. I feel like you only do explore the vast land if you need to finish off a combo or something. Because that avatar looks pretty nice, just makes casting expensive for your opponent. Next. Brushing Disappointment. Each player loses two life, you draw two cards. Okay. Uh, for three and a red black. Okay, that's not a bad card. It's not bad. Could win you the game on accident. Professor Zumancy. I really want to play Golgari right now. Like the strongest sets on strongest ones I'm seeing are Golgari and Is It. Those are the ones that get that have my attention. All right, so it's a uh, three and a and a green for a four three, and when it enters the battlefield, you get a pest. So that's some good value. You get 
a 4-3 and a 1-1. One, one. A summoning... Tenured Ink Caster. Look at that owl thing. It's 4 and a black for a 2-2. Two, two. When airs battlefield, put 1-1 one, one on target creature. Whenever creatures with 1-1 one, one counters on them attack, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Wow! There's other things that give you 1-1s one, as well on other creatures, so... Yeah! Like, Essence of Fusion, does that work here? It might, because it's 2 plus 1s, not, not like it's plus 2 plus 2, so... These two might work in tandem. Overgrown Arch, Defender! It's a 0-4 Defender. You can tap to gain life, Ooh, or you can do 2 to sacrifice it for learn. Just gain a life every time. Gain a life. Gain a life. Or block. Alright, yeah. Nice wall. I like this wall. Agonizing Remorse. One and a black. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. Or a card from their graveyard. Exile that card. You lose one life. Just making sure your opponent can't use something. Alright. Another rare wild card. That's our second rare wild card. Vortex Runner. As long as you control eight or more lands, Vortex Runner is a plus one zero and can't be blocked. Wow. Once you have eight or more lands, this thing's a three three unblocked. That'd be annoying to deal with late game. Two and a blue to make it a, get a two three. All right. Just okay. Professor Symbology. When first in the battlefield, you will learn. It's a two one one white. Okay, so learning's never bad. Okay. And then divide by zero. <laughs> what does this do? Two in the blue. Return target spell or permanent with mana value of one or greater to its owner's hand. Learn. So you cannot use this on summons. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of ward right now, yeah. So, you can't use it on summons, but you could just... Well... It's basically an unsummon. Like, it's just... Uh, it's just that. It's kind of a counter. And then... Learn. Yeah, then you get to learn. So that's... It's just a counter. It's just a counter. Alright. For four Boros. The four red-white. You get... A 2-3... Attack creatures you control have double strike. Oh, you just want him to hang out. You just want this guy so he hangs out and all your other creatures got double strike? And double strike also implies first strike, right? Yep. Both first strike attacks. Yep. Does not apply when creatures fight, though. Okay. Growth Spiral. I think I've had this card. Green and a blue. Draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Yeah, it just gets you ahead. Gets you ahead in mana. Reject. This is a counter. Yep. Counter. There's always counters. Counter, target, creature, planeswalker spell, unless the controller pays three. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. So it's, it's just a full-on exile. All right. Exile counter. Serpentine Curve 3 Blue makes a Fractal. How does the Fractal get buffed? So the Fractal is plus one plus one for every card you have in Exile and in Graveyard. So you could have a really strong Fractal late game. Hmm. Okay. This is, this is more for a late game thing. Wouldn't want to do it early unless you want just a little 1 1 blocker. Ogyar Battle Seer. 3, a blue and a red, gives you a 3 4 with haste, and you can tap it for scrying. So that sounds cool. Weather Bloom Apprentice. 2 2 for a black and a red, uh, green. Black and a green. Whenever you cast. Uh, oh, it's Magecraft. So whenever you Magecraft, your opponent loses a life, you gain one life. Yeah, you'd want this thing early, so when you're casting, it just causes trouble. Ooh, tend the pest. 
So there's some sort of pest deck that you can make in this game. As an additional cost to cast a spell check for a creature. Create X11 one, one black and green pests whenever this creature dies. Okay. X is the sacrifice creature's power. So just you kill something, you get that many pests. Depending on how much power they have. So that could be interesting, useful. Depending on how buff something is. It's an instant. Oh. So couldn't you, in theory, an opponent's going to cast a spell that's going to kill your creature. You can put on top of that stack a this card to just break into little pieces, into little pests, so it doesn't die. Well, it still dies, but it dies and you get pests, and so you don't lose any value. Woo! Mythic! Tenazir Quandrix. A 4-4 four, four for 3 blue and a green. It's a flying trample. When it's the battlefield, double number of plus one, plus one counters on target creature you control. Okay. When it comes in, if you got something buffed, it makes it buffer. Makes one creature buffer. And whenever he attacks, you may have the base power and toughness of other creatures you control become equal to his power and toughness to end a turn. So if you got anything lower than Tenazir, they become four fours. And if you buff Tenazir, they become whatever that buff is. So... Yeah, okay. That sounds fun. That sounds really fun. Alright. We are 19 packs in. Let's keep going. There's only 275 cards, so eventually we're just gonna get quicker here. Alright. Big play! Our creature gets so one in the green. Our creature goes 2-2 two, two, until end of turn. And it also gets a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So, it's a 3-3 three, three buff that becomes just a 1-1 one, one buff, I think. I'm reading that right? Also, they get reach. Hmm. Reckless Amplomancer. The 2-2, two, two, 1 in a green. Later on, for 4 in a green, you can double its power and toughness until end of turn. You can make it a 4-4 four, four or something better if it gets buffs. Expreddish. Expred. Expressive Iteration. Blue and red. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, put one of them at the bottom of the library, and exile the other one. You may play the exiled card this turn. Okay, so that's a lot of things. You top three cards. One goes in your hand, one at the bottom of the library, and you get to exile and play that card. You get to play it, then exile the card. That sounds very nice. That sounds extremely nice. I want four of these. Well, you still got to pay the cost, right? <laughs> you don't just play the card. Do you just play the card? Do you just... It says play the card. It doesn't say anything about the cost. If I'm reading it the way I want to read it, this sounds broken. If I'm reading it incorrectly, it's not that broken. Okay, uh, Academic Dispute. So you get Learn, and also target creature blocks this turn is if able... It may have it gain reach until end of turn. So you're just doing... You're giving a creature reach, and, and you're also getting learn. So I guess there's a lot of value here. Conspiracy Theorist, so 1 in the red, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it attacks, you may pay one and discard a card. If you do, you get to draw a card. Whenever you discard one or more non-land cards, you may exile one of them from the graveyard. If you do, you may cast it this turn. So it's a way to just keep utilizing your graveyard. So there's a lot of graveyard utilization in red. Interesting. Lightning Helix. Rare. Red and a white. Lightning Helix deals 3 damage to any target and you gain 3 life. Oh, that's just nice. Nice little thing to gain. Another Dragon's Approach. Beaming Defiance. 1 and a white. Target creature control gets plus 2, plus 2, gains Hexproof until end of turn. Hexproof. Alright, so that's a way to protect a card. So if a card you've got is really important to you and it gets targeted, just put this on top of the stack and it survives. Guiding Voice. The white. 
plus one plus one on a tar creature and learn. So you really got to pay attention if you're using learn cards. You got to put lessons in your sideboard. Village rights, black. Digital cost, cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards. Okay. Wouldn't be bad early. Holy balls! Exponential growth. XX, green, green. Until end of turn, double target creature's power X times. That sounds insane! Let's say you get that 5-4. You double it once, it's 10. It goes 20. Th what the fuck? This sounds like you just win early. What? This just sounds like you win the game, the card. What? Most Quantric students fundamentally disagree with the concept of enough. If I'm reading this card correctly, that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Because just for four, you double once, right? But for six, you double twice. For eight, you double three times, if I'm reading that correctly. Because you would go three, three, green, green. If I'm reading it correctly. Alright, next one. Whoop. Aegis Guardian. Oh, your enthusiastic study. Target creature gets 3 1 and gains trample until end of turn. Learn. Okay. Not bad. Learns what's it really good for. Mark, make your mark for just a white or a red. You get plus one to on a turn when that creature dies. When that creature dies this turn, create a three two and a white spirit, uh, red and white spirit token. So you're using this to make whatever creature stronger that you know is going to die when it blocks, but hopefully you're killing something with it or just blocking, whatever. And you get a three two out of it. So for one, you get a three two. So that's not bad. You're just also losing a creature. So whatever that additional cost would be for that creature, I suppose. Campus Guide. When Campus Guide enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, and shove and put uh, that card on top. Just you're ensuring that next time you're gonna get a land. The two one two cost. All right. So you're just helping you just get more land early. In a way, if you have this card and you're not don't have a lot of lands when you first draw, you can keep this instead of doing a mulligan. Umbral Juke. I haven't seen that many Inklings. For two and a and a black, you can sacrifice a player's uh, dark player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, or you can create a two one flying uh, black white Inkling. Reduce memory one and two white. Target, uh, exile target, non-land permanent. It's controller creates a 3-2 white spirit creature token. So, not the best. But you're using this on something they have that's really good to something that's not as good. Another flip card! Okay. Augmented Pugilist or Echoing Equation. 3-3 three, three, for a 1 and a 2 green. Trample, as long as you control 8 or more lands, it becomes a 8-8. Eight, eight. Ooh, okay. So early, it's just good blocker. I mean, it's just an okay creature. Late game, it's silly. Echoing Equation is three and two blue. Choose target creature you control. Each other creature you control becomes a copy of it until end of turn. So those creatures aren't legendary, but the chosen creature is legendary. When is legendary a factor? When is legendary a factor? I guess it's a factor, but when is it a factor? So basically just, if you have enough to win the fight, just, like, if you have a big creature and some smaller creatures, you can have a bunch of the big creatures so it's enough to win. So this is a good card, either way. I, we're, I'm definitely going to run Simic and Golgarian, is it? I don't really care about the Boros. Boros seems alright, but I don't really care to do Boros, still. There's nothing about Boris that's really drawing me yet. Introduction to Annihilation. Oh, we read that one. Un 
willing ingredients. Menace one one bla one black. Wow. Two things must block it, so you're gonna just do a little bit of chip in damage. Or two hundred black, you're gonna exile it from your graveyard, and you get to draw a card, and you lose one life. Okay. All right, so you get multiple values out of this card. Uh, Professor Warning. Hey, look who it is. Instant. Choose one. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature, or target creature gains indestructible on turn a turn. Or one black. It has its uses. That's not bad. It has its uses. By the way, can you get Onyx? Or did you have to buy the pre-order for Onyx? I hope you could get Onyx, because I want Onyx. Got to got two of these iterations. I need two more. Larg, Dean of Chaos. Or... Augustus, Dean of Order. Okay, so we have four of the Deans now. There's got to be one more Dean. Who's the last Dean? So the red side is a one red for two two. You can tap the discard card and draw a card. I forget what that term's called still. Or for four and a red and tap, you reveal... Crouch from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary non-land card with mono value three or less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. But all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. Is that really worth doing? For five mana on a tap, you get to cast a three mana card. And then you have a bunch of your other cards go to the bottom of the library. The only good thing is you now know it's at the bottom of your library. <laughs> Not the biggest fan of that. I'd rather just do the discard and draw, maybe. Augusta Dean of Order. So she's two and a white for a 1-3. Other tapped creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. Other tapped creatures you control get plus zero. Plus untapped gets plus zero, plus one. Whenever you attack, untap each creature you control, then tap any number of creatures you control. What? I don't fully understand. Uh... Wait, does blocking tap? I guess blocking doesn't tap, right? So then... So when you're attacking, plus one. When you're defending, plus one to plus one power to attack, plus one power to defend. I guess if I had a choice, I'd use Dean of Order. Huh. All right. Next one. Oh wait. Yeah. What's this? Doom Blade. Destroy target non-black creature for one and a black. All right. We are now one fourth through all the cards. Silver Quill Pledge Mage. One and two, uh, Orzov. Oh yeah, do I want to do Orzov? Hmm. Keep looking at their cards, I don't know yet. Maybe with Pests, but I'm liking Golgari with Pests more. Vampire Cleric. Uh, whenever you do Magecraft, it is... It has Flying or Life Link until end of turn. A 3-1. Alright, so you can keep it alive or you just like, gain HP, depending on what your opponent has. Square up. One and a green-blue. Target creature has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four until end of turn. Alright, so 4-4 four, four buff for one turn for the until end of turn. That could be useful as a blocker, it's just a big attack. Read that, read that. Explosive welcome! Alright. For seven and a red. Holy crap. Explosive welcome deals five damage to any target and three damage to any other target. So you're just spreading eight damage around. Add three red. So you get three more red after that. So for eight cost, you get three back. So it's kind of a five cost, but not exactly. Just allows you to cast another thing after explosive welcome. Okay. That could be useful. It's just you won't have eight mana for a while. So I don't know how useful it will be. But you could use that to kill two things. Or you can use that to hurt the opponent for three or five. It could end the game. Negate one in a blue. Counter target non creature spell. So that's just useful. 
And we got another flip. Miller, Crafty Companion, or Luca, Wayward Bonder. Oh, it's a Planeswalker or a creature. Okay. So, one and two white for a 2-3 creature. Whenever an opponent attacks one or more Planeswalker you control, put a loyalty counter on each Planeswalker you control. Uh, this is the only Planeswalker we've seen so far. Whenever a opponent, uh, whenever a permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. So, you want this creature just for card draws and just gaining loyalty. They attack a planeswalker, you get lo you get um loyalty. That's called loyalty. Okay, you get uh loyalty. Uh, if it attacks, whenever, hmm, whenever a permanent I control. Gets it becomes tar okay. So, planeswalker gets attacked, gain loyalty. Spells get cast on something I control. I draw a card. Okay, but not on me because I'm not a permanent. Other thing is Luca Wayward Bonder, four and two red. You get five loyalty, dude. Planeswalker plus one. You may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. If the if a creature card was discarded this way, draw two cards instead. Minus two, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. I exile it at the beginning of your next upkeep. So you get to use the creature once. All right. For seven, you get the emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Wow. All right. So if the planeswalker gets to live long enough, you can do a lot of work with him. Just need to get to that point. Well, I assume the emblem stays even if you lose Luca. So really, you get that you get that emblem. You're gonna have some really dangerous creatures coming out of that point. Next, so that's not bad. I like Luca. Fox might be useful. Expanded anatomy for three. Put a two one one counters on a target creature. It gains vigilance until end of turn. Necrotic Fumes, it's a lesson. Ah. One and two black. As an additional cost to cast this spell, exile a creature you control, exile target creature or planeswalker. Alright, so it's a bit expensive, but you can exile a creature or planeswalker, so that can be very useful. Igneous Inspiration. Igneous Inspiration deals three damage to any target, and you learn. So that's not bad. Like, you get a card, like. You, you're paying mana to damage, but you also get a card out of it. And we get our mythic uh, wild card, which I suppose is better than just getting our, our mythic. Because we could just get, we get any mythic we want. So that's our first mythic wild card. That's our third mythic, I think. Next. So chat, what do you think is the strongest looking just color or color combination so far? Because there's a lot of color combinations in this. Rightful Squad! Two white black for a 0-0 zero, zero death touch. Enters with two 1-1 one, one counters on it. When it dies, you can put the counters on another creature you control. That's kind of cool. I like that part. It's a death touch. That even when it dies, you get to buff something else. So that's pretty useful. Mage Duel! Two and a green. This spell costs two less to cast if you've cast another instant or sorcery spell this turn. Okay, so it could just be one. What does it do? Target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of turn. Then it fights target creature you don't control. So it's, oh, lets you have a, gives you a fight card. All right. Uh, all right. Well, there's different. There's the fight card and bite card. Fights are they hit each other. Bites are just they hit. I think. It's been a while. I had to double check that. Black and a white. Whenever you cast or copy a spell, sorcery, or magecraft. So it's a 2 2 for black and a white. It gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn when you magecraft. I see. We've seen other cards for this. Dumb Goth Titan. What the balls? Four black or green, you get an 11 10 that whenever it attacks or blocks, sacrifice a creature. So I'm making pests. I'm making a bunch of pests. Because with them, this sucker is going to be ridiculous. 
Jeez, all right, I want that. For four? As long as I pass, this thing's gonna be annoying as hell to deal with. Yeah, I'm gonna have this guy. I'm gonna have this guy for sure. I want four of him. I can also break him down using that pest card. Have 11 pests. That sounds awesome to me. I want that. So here's the, the is it uh, campus. Here's Mari. Reskilled! Tar uh, exile target, artifact or creature, its controller crits A44. Uh, red and blue. So, yeah, you just turn something that's really bad into that. Or, you turn something really small that you control into a 44 using 2 mana. I don't know if it's worth, but there you go. A line invocation. Oh, yeah, we've seen that one. Reconstruct history. For two red and white, you get return up to one target artifact card, up to one target enchantment card, up to one target instant card, up to one target sorcery card, and up to one target planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. Exile reconstruct history. You get a lot of things from your graveyard back to your hand, so you can get Luca back and things like that. That's cool. I like that. I want this card for sure in a deck. Fuck yeah! Oh, you gotta censor me now! What time was that? At 1 hour and 26 minutes, I now need to be censored. We got Onyx! I was worried she was a pre-order only thing. Liliana's my favorite character for no good reason. She's just my favorite. Okay, let's see here. She's always been my favorite. Magecraft! Opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Her plus one is you lose one life. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. For three, for minus three, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. That could be useful if you're getting, they're putting something rough against you. Also, if they try to hit you with your planes off with a four or something, you just kill it for three instead. Minus eight, each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this process six more times. Oh my god, either they discard their hand, or they lose up to, oh, 7 times 3, 21 life, Jesus Christ, okay. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, okay, one sec, need to make a note that I cursed. We have so many packs to go. Next, I'm just happy I got Onyx. She's the one card I really wanted to have, just for no reason, just because I'm a fan of Liliana. Defend the campus! Three and a white. Choose one. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, ten to turn. Destroy target creature with four power or greater. So, all right. So you can just, if you're going wide, can be really strong, or you just need to get rid of something really bad the opponent has. Not bad. Heated debate. Two and a red. This spell can't be countered. This includes by ward ability. Oh, Wow. Heated Debate deals 4 damage to target creature or planeswalker. I find it interesting is we have only seen one ward so far. How many wards are in this set is my question. Yeah. One in uh, a 2 and a red for just doing 4 damage to something isn't bad. Especially if they have ward. So this is could be very useful, especially because ward's going to be a thing that's going to go forward. Rip apart! Oh jeez. Red and white. Deals 3 damage to target creature, planeswalker, or you destroy a target artifact or enchantment. When's that not useful, right? Storm Kiln Artist. So 2-2, two, two, 3 and a red. Plus 1, plus 0 for each artifact you control. So he's going to be a 3-2 until you use this treasure. Uh, well, okay, you don't get a treasure. You magecraft a treasure. So if you're just casting a lot of spells, this guy's going to be a little scary. So that's cool. Revitalize. First time we got it. Gain three life, draw a card. That's just useful. Strict Proctor. Flying. Whenever a, a permanent entering the battlefield ca causes a triggered ability to trigger, counter that ability unless its controller pays two. This could be very annoying. This could be extremely annoying. Because it would make it that an opponent can't cast as much as they'd like because they have to keep paying these mana costs. That's pretty good. I like this one. This is a pretty good annoying card to have if you're white. Next. Elemental summoning. 
So three. So for five mana, you get to make a four four. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Okay. The big thing is that it's a lesson, so you just sideboard that. Spined Karak. A two and a four for a two and a green. Yeah, okay. Just basic. Okay. Never bad to have some basic just cards that'll be annoying to deal with. Rest, Rebirth. A green and a black. Choose hard creature. When that creature dies this turn, search library for a creature card with lesser mana value. Put into the onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. That's not bad in a way. Um, like if you know something's gonna get killed, put this on there, and then you'll get something value out of it. And it's definitely gonna be better than the two money you spent for that. So that's cool. Putrefy target. So one black and green destroy target artifact or creature. It can't be regenerated. Wow. All right. I haven't seen this one. Needle Thorn Drake. Flying Death Touch 1 1. A green and a blue. That is rare. A Death Touch that isn't black? Wow. Okay. That would be an annoying thing to have uh, to fight against. Yeah, I would want to have four of these. They're cheap, they're only 1 1s, and Death Touch. You'd be really annoying to deal with as a, as a Simic. You can also just re-sculpt it. Let's see here. Letter of acceptance. So it's artifact for three. You can just add one mana of any color. Nice. Or two on a... So that's a tap. Two on a tap, you draw a card. So you can use this for mana or just to get ahead with another card. Depending on the situation. Sometimes you would want another card. Stonebinder's familiar. For one, you get a 1-1. One, one. It's a good boy, right? Whenever one or more cards are put into exile during your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Familiar. This ability triggers only once each turn. So it just gets bigger. It just gets stronger as long as you're casting uh, a card every turn. Oh, wait, wait. Put into exile during your turn. Okay, so you have to do certain mechanics to make this dog utilized. Because not everything... There are things you can do to exile cards. You just have to do certain things to make it happen. Okay. Snakeskin a uh, snakeskin veil. For green, you get one one counter target creature control. It gains hexproof down a turn, so that's useful in a bad situation. As long as you're trying to kill, so just basically somebody's trying to kill it. You put this on the stack to protect it. That's really what you're doing. Another flip card: selfless glyph weaver and deadly vanity. So glyph weaver is a two three for a two and a white. So I, I assume you choose this whenever you want. You can exile it for creatures you control being indestructible turn to turn. So you do this to just protect them from a wipe, really. And the only wipe I know of right now is Draconic Intervention or whatever it's called right now. All right. Other side, Deadly Vanity for five and three black. That's a lot. Choose a creature or Planeswalker, then destroy all other creatures and Planeswalkers. Oh, it's a wipe. It is the ultimate wipe. Okay. Choose something. Everything else dies. If your opponent has anything, if they're wide, if they're tall, they got planeswalkers, whatever the hell, if they're being annoying in any way, Deadly Vanity just wipes them out. Just pick something of yours to stay alive. And then bam. You gotta make sure you at least have something on your side, though, to do it. That's a lot of mana, but that is a very deadly cast. So, all right. I think I'd want to have at least one of these for emergency situations on either side. The Glyph Weaver can protect you from Big Wipe, while the Deadly Vanity can protect you from a lot of bullcrap. We have a nice amount of decks to go. Let packs to go. Let's go. Keep hitting this. Frost Trickster! 2-2 two, two for 2 and a blue. It's flying. When Frost Trickster enters the battlefield, tap target creature... Opponent controls, that creature doesn't untap during it. Okay, so it's a sleep. Sleeps one card when it comes in, so that could stop something from being annoying for a turn. Oh, Opt's back? Okay. Try one, draw a card. Opt is just one of those cards like Shock that's just always around. This is our third Super Cool Campus. 
Secret rendezvous. Hello. A one and two white. You and target opponent draw each draw three cards. Do I want to do that? I don't know if I'd want to do that. It's a gamble. There are certain cards in here where it's a gamble. Where do you really want your opponent to have more cards? Wait. The only advantage of this is if your opponent has seven cards, you just force them to discard three. That's really it. But they get to choose what they keep, I assume. So, hmm. There's some value to that, but I don't know if I really want that. It, I really have to have something I really want out of my cards to do that, I think. Another conspiracy theorist. Is this guy worth? Let's see here. Oh, it's that one. Yeah, it's not bad. Keep going. We've got so many more to go. Oh, I got two of these now. Seen that one. Seen that one. Yeah, we've seen all these. Yeah, here's the one I was talking about. Yeah. If I've got that 11-10 creature and I know my opponent's going to try to kill it with some sort of spell, I would do this. And then I get that many pests. I don't know... Um, actually, I don't know if it counts as dying if your opponent does like an unsummon or things like that. Maybe it doesn't count as a death, so maybe this wouldn't work. But it really depends on what my opponent uses to kill it, I guess. Would make this into consideration. Call the Vate. Two and a green. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Three of those cards. Put one onto the battlefield, tapped, and the other into your hand, then shut. Okay. And bam! Another rare wild card. Okay, that's our, like, fourth, I think. Next! Oh, we finally got one of these. We got find the, finally got a Boros Land. Okay, what else we got here? We've gotten that one. Well, I don't think we've gotten this one, do we? Have we? No, we've gotten this one. Yeah, we've read this one. Have we read Salty Cushion? Let's see here. Search the library for an instant or sorcery card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shovel. Yeah, I think it was in that one, but yeah. For three mana, you're getting something you really want, so yeah, you're going to want that card. Ingenious Mastery. X, two, and a blue. May pay just the two and the blue if you want. If the two and the blue is paid, you draw three cards. Then opponent creates two treasure tokens, then they scry two. Jeez, that's a lot going on. If you do the X2 and a blue, you just draw X number of cards. That sounds really good. Okay, so you can draw three cards. Or you can draw... Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So, I either have to pay six to get three cards, or I can pay this and my opponent gets two treasures and I, and they get the scry two as well for me to get three three cards. So if I'm just desperate for cards early, bam! If I, uh, later on in the game, I can just do this to get more cards. Okay. Frozen Grip. Split second. As long as this spill is on the stack... Players can't cast spells or, inacti or activate abilities that aren't mana ab abilities. Okay. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Okay, that's a mechanic I'm going to need to double check how that works. I don't fully comprehend it. So they can't use creature abilities, they can only use cards? I don't... Okay, let's see. Next one. Pillar Drop Rescuer. For four and a white, you get a 2 2 when it's battlefield. Return target creature card with three mana value or less from your graveyard to your hands. So you just, alright, just unless you get another small card back. Ah, uh, we go Gari Land. We haven't had one yet. Alright. Whirlwind Denial. For each spell and ability your opponent control, counter it unless the controller pays four. This is a two and a blue for that. I got two of these now. Just need two more to try to do something really dumb with that. Okay, split segments can't be responded to. Alright. A lesson. Introduction prophecy. Three. Scry two, then draw a card. Okay. 
I feel like you just put this in your sideboard. You just do it. You just put that in there. I can't remember if we've read this one. Frost Trickster, two and a, a two two for two and a blue. It's a flyer. Oh, it's a sleep card, right? Whenever enemy's battlefield, it sleeps a card. This is my third decisive denial. Emergent sequence, one and a green. Search your library for basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. That land becomes a z that land becomes a fractal that's still a land. Put 1-1 one, one counter on it for each land you had entered the battlefield under your control this turn. So it's a 1-1 one, one land. Okay. That guy. I like this guy. God's willing. It's a 1 white. Alright. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Try 1. Okay, that could be useful. Keep a creature alive for a turn. Well, it's a color mixing, which is we're going to see a lot of, so I don't know how useful it can be. Thrilling Discovery for a white and a red. You gain two life, then you may discard two cards. If you do, draw three cards. Okay. Conjix Cultivator. Is that a snake or a turtle? That's a snake. That's a snake. I think. Is that a turtle? Oh, it's a turtle druid. Freaking A! It says it right there. All right. So one green, blue, and a green, blue... It's a 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic force or island card. Put it into your battlefield, then shuffle. Alright. Yeah, it's a way to just get ahead and land. Okay. Eliminate. Instant. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mono value 3 or less. Mono value, by the way. Okay. How many planeswalkers are 3 or less mono value? Venerable Ware Singer. Vigilance Trample. 3-3 three, three, for 1 red and a white. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, may return target creature card with mono value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of damage venerable dealt to the player. There was the Flame Painter, which was red, but also utilizes your, your graveyard, so... If you go Boros, you could use that with this, so you have multiple threats with your graveyard. Interesting. Pop quiz! For two and a blue, you draw a card and you learn. Alright, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Devouring Tendrils. Oh, look, Tendrils are in here. Okay, target creature control deals damage equal to its power to target creature planeswalker you don't control. When the permanent you don't control dies this turn, you gain two life. So it's a fight. And you get two life if you kill when you fight. Okay. Kelpie guide. It's a Kelpie. I haven't seen Kelpies in a while. Okay, so it's a 2-2 two, two for two and a blue. And you can tap it to untap target uh, permanent you control. Or you can use it to tap target permanent. Activate only if you control eight or more lands, though. So you can use this creature to, to sleep another creature for a turn. Or you can just untap a permanent you control. Hmm. Okay, that could be useful in combination with tap creatures. Furry Cone Snarl. Now this is a land we haven't seen before. As it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a Mountain or Plains card from your hand. If you don't, it enters tapped. Then you then it can be used for a red or a white. So you want to put this in first so it doesn't end up coming tapped. Or it's just a mixed land. Okay. So normally, you can have a mixed land that comes in tapped. Or, at this point, it's untapped. Huh? Ah, there we go. Punch, punch is one-way damage, not bite. It's a punch, not a, not a fight. Okay, so this is a punch. Oh, because it control deals damage. Okay, so it's a punch, not a fight. So if you punch something to death, you get two life. All right. Next. We have our second Golgari land. 
Lash of Malice. Target creature gets plus two, minus one until end of turn. Okay, so you can kill something with that, or you can have something hit harder on your side. Hall Monitor. Shouldn't know that was gonna happen. A 1-1 one, one for one red, for a red, gets haste, and for one in red and a tap, target creature can't block this turn. Okay, so you can use that to make something else more annoying. Elite Spellbinder. So, two white, three one, for a three one. It's flying, one enters the battlefield, look at opponent's hand. Wow! It makes a non-land card from it. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. A spell cast this way costs two more to cast, though. So, you use this, you can see your opponent's hand, so you know exactly what they have coming up, besides what they draw. And you would, I guess you would exile their most expensive card, or their most dangerous card, because then they still can't cast it until, well, they have enough mana to do it. Plus two. Wow. That seems useful. That seems pretty useful, especially early game. We wouldn't be able to use until turn three, but still. Stone Rain. What? I, I double clicked on accident, apparently? Well. We'll probably find another one, though, so I can read it later. Mage Hunter's Onslaught. Two, two black. Destroyed target creature of Planeswalker. Whenever a creature blocks this turn, its control loses one life. It's a sorcery. Interesting. So they know what's happening. It's not instant, so they know. That if they block, it's going to be even worse for them. Here's our third Dragon's Approach. Our third Drake. Our third Mark of... Uh, make Your Mark. Quintorius Field Historian. Three, red and a white. Bitch Control, get plus one, plus zero. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard. Great, a uh, three, two. Okay. So yeah, looks like... Yeah, uh, Boros has spirits. Has a lot of spirit stuff going on, so there's some sort of spirit deck you can make, and this guy's gonna be very important to that. Harmonize! For two and two and two green, you draw three cards. That just sounds good. You exile their next play to mess up their tempo. Okay, that makes sense. Our third Golgari land. I'm really curious about Thunder's Orator. God's willing. Okay, we've seen all of these cards. Okay. Next. Here's where it gets faster once we've already seen some cards. Haven't seen this? Spectre of the Fens. Three black to get a 2-3. It's a flyer. For six mana. So for five and a black, your target opponent can lose two life and you gain two life. So... You could hold on to it to just do that later in the game. Just be annoying with that. Have I read Maelstrom Muse? I don't think I have. Two, four. For one, a blue, a red, and a blue red. It's a flyer. It's a two, four. Whenever it attacks, the next instance of sorcery spell you cast costs X less to cast, X being the power. Now, oh, buff this up, you can cast some spells. Yeah, okay. Exponential Growth, the second one we've gotten. All right. Next. Hmm, so our second is it land. Our third teach by example. Our third of this freaking thing. Our third of that. Okay, we're getting thirds of everything. Electrolyze! This card's back. One blue red. Electrolyze deals two damage and divided as you choose among one or two targets. Draw a card. That card's freaking back. All right. Here it is. Containment Breach is new. Two and a green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If it's Have we seen any enchantments so far? If it's mana value is two or less, create a uh, pest. Okay. A 1-1 one, one pest. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Alright, there's plenty of artifacts to destroy. Hmm. Prismary Apprentice. I think we've seen this one. Yeah, we've seen this one. Yeah, you, you, you cast a spell that's five or more, they get stronger, 1-1. One, one. Callous Blood Mage. Two and a black for a 2-1. When they enter the battlefield, you get a 1-1 one, one pest, you get a single pest, or you can draw a card and you lose one life, or you can exile your target player's graveyard. This looks 
looks really good to me. You get a 2-1 that also gives you a 1-1, one, one, or you just draw a card while also having a 2-1, or you get rid of their graveyard. Screw over a red player. Screw over an Izzet. Screw over a Boros. That's nice. That would just ruin a red player's day. I like it. I like it. Unless I'm playing red. Unless I'm playing red, I like it. Regrowth. One on the green. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, okay. Apparently I need to deal with that too. Next. I got 56 more packs. But we've already seen a lot of them. Environmental Sciences. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put into your hand, then shuffle. You gain two life or two. That's just useful. You get a heal and you get a land card. And it's a lesson. So yeah, you bring it in through learn. Our second Orzov, I think. Maybe our third. Actually, no, this is our fourth Orzov. Yeah, we've seen all these other cards. Verdant Mastery. I don't know if we've seen this one. Have we seen yeah, we've seen this one. Where you can get a bunch of cards, you can also have your opponent get some cards as well. Yeah, I think it's the first rare we got. Yeah, you search the, your library for up to four basic land cards, reveal them, put one of them onto the battlefield tapped under your uh, opponent's control if you paid the cheaper cost, or if you did not, you get to put two on the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into your hand and shop. It's a way to get four lands when you're at six lands. Or you had another way to get mana. Being mono rich is never a bad thing, especially if you're going Simic. Ooh, new one. Star People! For one, you get a 0-0, zero, zero, enters with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. When it dies, you can put its counter on another creature. There was an Orzov, too, right? Uh, I forget what they were called. Was it Delinquent Peoples or something? Where you got two 1-1s? One, so being able to put the, the counters on other things ain't bad. Promising Dusk Mage. When Promising Dusk Mage dies, if it had a 1-1 one, one counter on it, draw a card. So... Put this over here if you're running Ozob. Two and a black for a two three doing that. Alright. Haven't read this one yet. Closing statement, Orzov. Three white and black. In conclusion. The spell casts two less to cast during your end step. Okay. If you do it in your end step, it's just three mana. Okay. Uh one, a white and a black. Destroy target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Put a one-one counter on up to one target creature you control. So if you're willing to wait to your end step, BAM! Just take out a Planeswalker creature, and then there you go. Alright. That's not bad. I like it. I like it for the cheaper value. Bookworm! Oh my god, look at that thing! It takes devouring a book in one sitting to a frightening extreme. These worms are always 7-7, seven, seven, aren't they? 7 and a green for a 7-7 seven, seven trample. When it enters the battlefield, you get 3 life and you draw a card. You can also pay two on a green to put Bookworm from your graveyard into your library third from the top. So your opponent knows it's coming. <laughs> Interesting. But like by the time you get to Worms, you're, you're near the end of the game. That's a dangerous creature. Alright, we got another Snarl. This time it's a Simic Snarl. Okay. Freaking Legendary Lands up in here. Combat Professor! 3 and a white for a 2-3 flyer. Beginning your combat on your turn, target creature control gets plus 1 and gains vigilance until end of turn. That's nice. Our fourth Cyber Quill Campus, our fourth Teach by Example. Second, Reduce Memory. Humiliate! A white and a black. Target opponent reveals their hand. Again with this, alright. Choose a non land card from it, the player discards that card, but a 1 1 counter on a creature control. I like it. Humiliate could be very useful in breaking up your opponent's tempo. Mythic! This is our fourth mythic. Ecological Appreciation. X2 green. Search library and graveyard for up to four creature cards with different names that each have mana value X or less and reveal them. An opponent chooses two of those cards, shuffle the chosen cards into your library and put the rest onto the battlefield. Exile Ecological Appreciation. This is a 
different version of that other card, isn't it? I can't remember the card right now. It's the one with like those giant minotaurs on it. Or not minotaurs, giant like oxes or something. Is this that card? But different? Because that one was like eight mana to cast. And this one is you can go even you have to go even higher for everything. It's a different version of that card, I think. Okay, so you can put down two, and they shuffle two into your library. You just have to make sure you have enough mana value to cast the ones you want. So if I want the worm, I'm going to need three plus eight. So I'm going to need freaking 11 mana. And green has a lot of land attempt, the way to get land, so... Alright. I like it. I'd use it. It's a very late game card, I feel, but I'd use it. Or I can just have a bunch of little minis as threats. 53 to go. We are two hours in. Okay, what have we not seen? We've seen all of these but Baryon books. Four and a blue! This spell casts... Two less to cast if it, the target is a, if it targets an attacking creature. Puts our creature into its owner's library second off from the top. So it's an unsummon. Alright, cool. Alright, so we got here. Oh yeah, I like this card. I'm happy to have two of them. Why not? Good general creature for five? Yeah, I want it. If you have two of those, that'd be really annoying for your opponent to cast. Access tunnel. You get a generic or three and a tap. Characters with three power or less can't be blocked this turn. So make little things annoying. This is our third firstborn. Maybe our fourth. Ah, another flip card. Rowan, Scholar of Sparks, Will, Scholar of Frost. They're both Planeswalkers, so let's see here. Ooh, instants and sorcery spells you cast, you cast cost one less. They only start with two loyalty, though, so they can get taken out quick. So for the plus, they deal one damage to each opponent. If you've drawn three or more cards this turn, she deals three damage to each opponent. So I need card draw. To utilize her better. For four, you get an emblem. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay two. If you do, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Nice. When it says may, you don't have to, which means you can still have everything target the same target, the same target, I believe. It's not a bad emblem. You only need a little bit of time to get to it. On the other side, though, you have four and a blue for a four loyalty. And same thing, instant sorcery costs one last to cast. This plus one will give a creature plus zero plus two until end of turn. Minus three is draw two cards, or minus seven is exile up to five target permanents for each permanent exile this way. Its controller creates a four four blue and red elemental creature token. So, yeah, you end up with 20 power, 20 toughness out of with four, five creatures that way. Spread across the five. You just have to have enough creatures to do it. I think I'd rather use them for card draw. I, I'd rather use them for drawing cards. Is it these two? No, no, no. Yeah, there might be these two. Yeah, it is these two. Huh. Isn't that funny? We got the, the we got these cards. I mean, that's something. Oh, they're twins. Okay. Makes sense they'd have this card. They have that card. And he's on the cover. Funny, I haven't seen him in that many cards. I've seen Glasses Girl and that other girl more. There's Mari Campus. This is our third or fourth one. Ooh, this is something. Lorehold Excavation. Red and a white. At the beginning of your end step, mill a card. If a land card was milled this way, you gain one life. Otherwise, Lorehold Excavation deals one damage to each opponent. Yeah, okay. For five, you can exile a card from your graveyard and make it 3-2. Okay. This is our first enchantment from what I can tell. Huh. Alright, that has got some uses to it. Milling land would be annoying, yeah. 
Deadly Brew. So a black and a green. Each player sacrifices a creature of Planeswalker. If you sacrifice a permanent this way, you may return another permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. I don't know. It's got its uses. Strategic planning. One and a blue. Look at the top three cards from your library. Put one of them into the, your hand. The rest into the graveyard. Yep. Useful if you're doing is it. Ah, here's another Dean. All right. We've now seen four of the Deans, I think. Valentin, Dean of Vain. Uh, Lizette, Dean of the Root. So, for one black, it's a 1-1 one, one Menace Life Link. The non-token creature in opponent controls would die, exile it instead. When you do, you may pay two. If you do, create 1-1 one, one black... Oh, so you create pests. Ooh! With this guy, I can just build pests. All right. I gotta make sure I'm killing my opponent's creatures, but whenever they die, I'm getting pests. That's cool. Costs two, but I'm getting pests, and pests give me life. Other side is Lizette, Dean of the Root. Two and two greens for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you gain life, you may pay one mana. If you do, put plus one plus one counter on each creature control, and those creatures gain counter, uh, gain trample until end of turn. If I'm reading correctly, the 1-1's one one's permanent, the trample is uh till the end of turn. If I'm reading it correctly. If I'm reading it wrong, it's still the 5-5 five, five and trample. I mean, well, she becomes 5-5 five, five and trample. The other ones get a little bit more and trample. Next. Study break. Tap up to two target creatures. Learn! Interesting to have a sleep on white instead of blue. Hmm, that could be useful. Aether Helix, three, a blue and a green. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So it's it's a sorcery, though. Here's our fourth one of this. Sorcery, so it's a sorcery on summon. And... Yeah, I get a thing from Graveyard, so that's not bad. Mana Teeth! Tithe. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one, so... Better hope they spent all their mana. Wind Scroll Shaman! A 1-2 double strike for 2 and a red. Yeah, okay, yeah. You can use this to defend kind of alright. It'd be better for... Offensive, you can build it up. Illustrious Historian. It's a 2 1. Cost 1 and a red. For 5, you can exile it and you get a 3 2. So, using it early and then you just make a better one out of it later. That's still a lot, though, to make a 3 2. But if you're utilizing token bonuses and things like that, then yeah, you want to do that. Second explosive welcome. Shadowing Laureate. A one, a black, and a white, a white, black. A white, a black, and a white, black. So three mana. It's a two, two flying. Whenever a creature you control with flying dies, put a one, one counter on target creature you control. Okay. How many flyers are you going to have? Prismari Command. So one, a blue, and a red. Use two. Prismari Command deals two damage to any target, or... Target player draws two cards, then discards two cards, or destroy a target artifact, or target player creates a treasure token. So I could kill something small and uh, destroy a target artifact, or get myself a treasure, or draw some cards and discard some cards. Okay. Not bad. The options there aren't bad at all. Next. Yeah, we definitely hit four now if we didn't hit four before. Got three of these, two of these, two of these, new one. Mentor's Guidance, two and a one. I mean, two and a blue. Sorcery, when you cast a spell, copy it. If you control a Planeswalker, Cleric, Druid, Shaman, Warlock, or Wizard. And you're going to have those. Uh, scry one, then draw a card. So, with those things, you get to scry twice and then draw two cards. That's nice. The Biblioplex! Tap for mana. Or two and a tap. Look at the top card of your library. If it's an instant or sorcery card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. 
you don't put the card into your hand, you may put it in your graveyard. Activate only if you have exactly zero or seven cards in hand. What the balls? All right, that's uh, all right. Interesting card that I'm gonna have for land just cause, but all right, interesting card. Problem is the seven or zero. That's the hard part. Expel. Uh, but I don't know what this elephant did, but they're out now. Two and a white. Exile target. Tapped creature. So if they're blocking, exile them. Or if they're attacking, exile them. No, wait. I can't remember blocking taps. But if they're attacking, exile them. Quintarius was a daydreamer. Far happier digging through history books than practicing battle tactics. He agreed with the military academy on one only one thing. He did not belong in their ranks. Okay. Still being a military man, he becomes a scholar. Cool. I think we've seen Quintarius elsewhere, too. Stone Rice Spirit. One and a two for a one and a white. It's a flyer. For four, you can exile it from your graveyard. Target creature gains flying two on a turn. Okay. So it's still useful even when it's gone. Mercurial Transformation. And it's a lesson. One and a blue. Until end of turn, target non-land permanent loses all abilities and becomes your choice of a blue frog creature with a base of 1-1 one, one, or an octopus with a 4-4. Four, four. So I can make something small, big, or I can just make something my opponent has worse. Yeah, block doesn't tap. That's what I was trying to remember correctly. Yep. So just attacking creature gets exiled. Yeah, we've read that one before. Multiple choice! I like multiple choice. I'm happy to have two of these. I'm happy to have two of those for sure. I would like to have four of those. When I like a card, I want four of it. This is our third Golgari. Another one of the lore holds. I find it interesting that uh, Boros is doing mill instead of blue. They're, they're putting things that are typically in one color to me and another color. Brainstorm! Draw three cards, then put two cards from the, your hand on top of the library in any order. Huh, nice. For one blue. Dueling Coach. When Dueling Coach enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. It's a 2-2 two, two for a 3 and a white. For 4 and a white, you can put an additional 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control with plus 1-1 one, one counter on it. Okay. So it just makes a, a character, a creature that was made stronger even stronger, and if you have other plus one one counters on anything else, that'd be even more helpful. Okay. Another mythic rare. Wild card. I think this is our fifth mythic rare. I might be wrong on my count. Could be very wrong on my count. It's been all. Is it three or fourth land? This is our second Rutha. Second of this thing. Third of this. Third of this. Hello there. I, shall teach you much. I like him already. Mavinda, student's advocate. A 2 3 flyer for 2 and a white. Zero cost. You may cast target instant or sorcery card from the graveyard this turn. If that spell doesn't target a creature you control, it costs 8 more to cast this way. That spell would be put into your graveyard exile instead. Activate only once each turn. May still play the spell's cost. How many rules of spells still apply? Okay, so... Basically, you just want to activate cards that buff your creatures with him. That's why he's a student's advocate. But if you want to do something else, then it's going to cost eight. Wow. All right, okay, okay. All right. So, if you want to use Mavinda, make sure you got some buff cards for your whites. Or Boros, whatever you're doing, or Orzov. Okay. I like how the introduction to that card, though. Damagoth, Woe Eater. One black, green, and a black green. Beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Oh, Jesus. When you sacrifice them, though, each opponent discards a card, you draw a card, and you gain two life. Huh. Seven. It's pretty cheap, though. If Again, if I can get pests going, 
Hell yeah. <laughs> if I can get Pest going, hell yeah on these cards. Got the twins again. I really want to try to make a, a Pest deck that utilizes the big creatures. I think this is our third one of these, or second. Actually, this might be our first, actually. No, it's our second. Fortifying Drought. You gain two life. Target creature gets plus X plus X into end of turn. Or X is the amount of life you gain this turn. So if you get more life gain, it can be even more ridiculous. Our third Verdant Mastery. Our second one of these is the Bayou Bruff. Arr! Okay, it's our third or fourth rare wild card. There, Spiteful Squad, that's what it is. Yeah! With this, on top of the, the coach, you could do some work with this. Also, that other guy with the coach. Alwyn Shield Mage. Uh, 3 3, 3 white and a black. It's a flyer. Ward, pay 3 life. This is the second ward we've seen. <sighs> Target of a spell or ability. Okay. Uh, ooh, Eye Twitch. We haven't seen this one. A 1 1 flyer. When it dies, you get learned. It's a 1 black for it. I see no reason not to have this. It's just a useful little thing you can have. That's our third or fourth one of the Ingenious Mastery. Honor Troll! 2-3 for 2 and a green. And Vigilance. If you would gain life, you gain that much life plus 1 instead. Ooh, okay. I don't know how many life gainers we get, though. Plus two, plus one on auto troll as long as you have 25 or more life. Now that's nice. So it becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Wow. This is our second map we've gotten Killian. Drix Haven Stadium. Three artifact. Tap, add mana. Put a point counter on Strix Haven Stadium. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, remove a point counter from Strix Haven Stadium. Whenever you, a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, Put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Then if it has 10 or more point counters on it, remove them all and that player loses the game? That's really saying whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, remove a point counter from Strixhaven Stadium. Whenever a creature you control deals damage to them, you get a point on it. Whenever, Then if it hits 10 or more point counters on it, remove them all and that player loses the game. Just if I get 10 points, I win. So if I hit my opponent 10 times, I win. If I don't, if they don't, if I do 10 hits with them not hitting me back at all, I win. So if I, if I go wide as balls, I could win with Strixhaven Stadium. If I'm reading that correctly. So go hella wide with the stadium, you can win. Or just, you know. Or you also get mana during that. So there's the only way to lose, to lose the only way to lose points is your opponent hitting you. Okay. Their way of putting Quidditch in this. Huh, so our second of a couple of these. Third, third. Golden ratio! Oh my god, okay. Golden ratio. One green and a blue. Draw a card for each different power among creatures you control. Okay, so I could have up to two. Oh, and uh, power. I have red color for some reason. Power! So you could do a lot more with this. And you get a mix of powers. Manifestation Sage. Oh, we got that one. Okay. Crux of Fate. It's a mythic. She just want to destroy all dragon creatures. Destroy all non-dragon creatures. <laughs> yeah, this is Nico Bullas and his brother, isn't it? Or is that that other creature? Okay, let's see. So three and two black. Yeah, this is Nico Bullas and his brother. Okay. Choose one to stronger. So that's, uh, if you're going for dragon supremacy. If you're going for dragon supremacy, there you go. Next. The 
Defiant Strike. Third creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Draw a card as a light. Mascot Interception. This looks like Quidditch. Okay. So for three and a red, this spell costs three less to cast if it targets a to creature token. Oh yeah, we've seen this one already. Yeah, okay. So this is a way to take advantage of, to of, of summons. You get to take control of it and it gets plus two and zero and has haste to end a turn. Woo! Three green, three blue for Body of Research. It's a mythic. Make a fractal that is X plus one plus one, where the number of cards in your library is X. What? 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 Of course, there's a lot of ways to kill a fractal, but still, damn. If they don't have an answer at the moment, holy crap, like. OK, turn six, maybe you would get it a little bit sooner if, if there's some way to just get your green and blue up somehow. Or to just pump up your, your green and blue, like treasures or things like that. And you get a fractal that's like 50, not 50, like 40 or something pretty early. Wow. That just looks like a threat. And then you might be able to cast it again if you just do certain cards. Jeez. Body research sounds insane to me. First aid class. Well, one in the red. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one one counter on it and gains hasten to end a turn. And it's a loss of a learn. Okay. That's the talents I like. This is the second one we've gotten. That's an interesting card. Another Snarl. Orzov Snarl. Okay, next. Excavated Wall. First time we've gotten this one. Zero four, you get to mill. Defender, one, and tap, mill a card. So, this was, what was the other? It was an Orz... Oh, no, no. It was a Boros Land, right? So, this was a Boros Land. So, you can just... There's some milling you can do here. Third satchel we've gotten, fourth of this. I don't think we've gotten Bean Defiance before. Dark creature you control gets plus two, plus two, gains hex proof until on a turn. Actually, no, we've gotten this one. That's useful. That's very useful to put on a stack. Second, uh, Kiana and uh, Abraham. Blue Sun Zenith. Zenith. X3 blue, target player draws X cards, shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its owner's library. Cool, cool. Leyline Invocation. We got that one. Uh, we got that one. No, we got this one. Pledge Ma Mage. T2 for one, a red and a white. Uh, red, white, red, white. First strike and gets plus one, plus zero with Magecraft. Okay. Power Wrangler. Elite Spellbinder. I don't think we've gotten this guy, have we? No, we've gotten this guy. 3 1 for two and a white. Double check if I've read this one or not. When here's the battlefield, look at target opponent's hand. Yeah, that card. Yeah, yeah, okay. We read that a while ago. I like it. Mortality Spear. The spell costs two less to cast if you gain life this turn. Destroy target non land permanent. For two, a black and a green. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we've gotten these guys twice as well now. Okay. Fourth one of these, second one of these, second one, second one. We're at four plus on this one. Approach of the second sun? Six and a white. If this spell was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. <laughs> Otherwise, you put into your its owner's library seventh from the top and you gain seven life. So in seven turns, you're going to win unless you just get yourself there sooner. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's funny. Your opponent has to do some way just make you not be able to cast it. Just, I win. All right. Introduction to Prophecy. Three, scry and draw a card. I think we should have read this one before. 
We haven't read this one. Tangle Trap. For one and a green, choose one. Tangle Trap deals five damage to target creature with flying or destroy target artifact. All right. Nice. Right. Anti-flyer. Yeah, we're doing the... Accomplished Alchemist, never gotten this one before. 2-5 for 3 and a green. Add 1 mana of any color with a tap, or tap at X mana of any color where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. Okay. There's some life gain stuff going on with green. Let me see, what is it? Oh, that's what it looks like. Okay. Our third of these two, alright. Where they want us to play the Cynic uh, Deans. My third of the Demogoth Titan, okay. Third of the Demogoth Woe Eater, too. Second Fracture. And this is our fourth Verdant Mastery. our third lower hold excavation oh here's one go blank target player discards two cards then exile all cards from that player's graveyard you want a black yeah i'm liking that black has this anti-graveyard stuff so they specifically are anti uh what red's doing really holy crap we got another one of these firstborns what happens when we go over four because this is definitely our fourth Firstborn. Draconic Intervention. This is our third Draconic Intervention. This is, I think, our first Simic Land. Might be our second. I think it's our first, though. Super Cool Apprentice. Oh, we read that one. Why am I this one? Brackish Trudge. Look at that thing. What the hell is that? Fungus Beast. So 4-2 for two and a black. Brackish enters the battlefield tapped. For one and a black, return it from the, your graveyard to your hand. Activate only if you gain life this turn. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Well, if you got if you got a pest, you can utilize it. Gnarled Professor. 5-4 for two and two greens. Trample, when there's a battlefield, you get learn. Okay. Cultivate. Two and a green. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one into the battlefield. Tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle. We are three-fourths through all these packs. And we've read all of these. And that one, too. All right. That's mean, Jinx. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna have. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have twice as many packs unlocked than you when we play each other. But still, you got some decks you can come up with that might beat what I've got. Uh, Rise of Exitus. Exitus. Four, a white and a black, and a white and a black. Uh, white and black, white and black. Exile target creature, exile up to one target instant or sorcery card from your library. From a, from a library. Learn. That's a lot going on there. Another wall. Two mil. Dragon's Guard Elite. I think we had this, but let's see. One in the green for 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast a copy or instant... Uh, whenever you Magecraft, it gets plus one, plus one. Wow. For four and two greens, you can double the 1-1 one, one counters on it. That's nice. This could get really silly. Mind's Desire. Four and two blue. Shuffle your library, then exile the top card of your library. On to end a turn, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. Storm! I'm gonna really need to understand Storm better. So, copy it for each spell cast before its turn. You may choose new targets for this card. So, if I just cast a bunch and then do Storm, Mind's Desire, I can do a bunch of Mind Desires, I guess?
Ardent Dusk Speaker. Whenever Ardent Dusk... Okay, so it's a 3-4 for a white and a red. Whenever it attacks, you may put an instant sorcery card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. If you do, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play these cards... Those cards this turn. That's a lot going on there. Magnum Opus! Six blue and red! Deals four damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. Tap two target permanents. Create a blue four four blue red. And draw two cards. That's a lot of crap going on there for eight, or eight mana. Or you can just create a treasure for two. That's a mythic. Okay, six or seven mythic mythic. Ah, super cool pledge mage. Three one. It's a one uh, white or black, white or black. Whenever you cast Magecraft, it gains flying or lifelink into another turn. Okay, we've seen that one. Okay, we've seen all these. A third of the Wandering Archaic. I'm cool with that. I like how I'm gonna listen to limited resources. They're gonna probably hate everything I like, and I'm gonna. And then Kyle can hate everything they like. Who knows? Because they know what they're doing and I don't. That's the second Baleful Miser Mastery. Ephemerate. One might. Target creature. Exile target creature control. Then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Rebound. Okay, that's interesting. Rebound's interesting. We have four fifths through now. And nothing new. Impulsive Research, two and a blue. Uh, target player draws three cards. Then the player discards two cards unless they discard a land card. Okay. Spring Main Servant. Three, two, four, two and a green. When Spring Main Servant enters the battlefield, you gain two life. Okay. Not bad. We need these life gainers for other cards. Wandrix Command. Don't think we've seen this one. One green and a blue. Choose two. Target. Uh, return target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. So don't summon. Found a target artifact or enchantment spell. Put two 1 1 counters on target creature. Target player shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their hand. Into their library. So. That's yeah, a lot of uses there. That's pretty cheap, too. I like it. Wandrix Command sounds good. That's our fourth dragon's approach. Fourth of this, fourth of that. Second or third of this. Yeah, keep going. Fourth or fifth teach by example, so we're good on that now. No, we've seen that one. We've seen that. Okay. We haven't seen Zimone, Quandrix Prodigy. This is what their name is. One, two for a blue and a green. For one and tap, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Ooh, good for early. Four and tap, draw a card. If you control eight or more lands, draw two cards instead. Okay, it's not bad. Gets you going quicker. Not as good as an elf, but there you go. What is this? Orzov and Rakdos going on here. The hell? All right. Need to find some way to get a treasure if you want to use that one red or the one white, depending on what you're doing. Exodus, Orig, uh, Overlord, Awaken the Blood Avatar. So I'm guessing this is our, our Voldemort. Okay, so he's a 2 4 that costs one white, and uh, one a white, and two black. Magecraft is return target non legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That is nice. I keep him for that. On the other side, there was Awaken the Br the Blood Avatar, which is six black and a red. As an additional cast cost to this card, to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs two mana less for each creature sacrificed this way. Each opponent sacrifices a creature, creature three, six, black and red. Uh, cre uh, uh, so much going on here. Can I read? No, I can't. 
Each opponent sacrifices a creature. And then you create a 3-6 black and red avatar creature token with haste. And whenever this creature attacks, it deals 3 damage to each opponent. So it's got a lot going on there. This is Teferi's daughter. Of course it's Teferi's daughter. Everyone hates Teferi. Okay. Yeah. Whenever someone says F Teferi, someone did. Okay. Someone did. That's why he's got a daughter. You gotta be kidding me. I hate Teferi. Teferi's a pain in the butt to deal with. That card's interesting. I don't know how good it is. Waterfall Aerialist. 3-1. It's got Ward. It's a Flyer. 3 and blue. Okay, so it's just annoying. Mythic Rare Wildcard. So that's our 7th or 8th. We're getting the end here. We've seen all of these before, except for this. Torn Sculptor. Flamethrower Sonata. Interesting. Merfolk Wizard, huh? Okay, so it's a 2-2 two -two with Ward 2. It costs 2 and 2 blue. When Torn Sculptor enters the battlefield, exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Put a number of 1-1, one, one, plus 1, plus 1 counters equal to the half that card's mana value rounded up. Ooh, rounded up. Okay. Flamethrower Sonata. One in a red. Discard a card, then draw a card. When you discard an instant or sorcery card this way, Flamethrower Sonata deals damage equal to that card's mana value. Target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So, nice little poke. You can have some really good work with this sculptor. I'd rather you do the sculptor, I feel, most of the time. Tezzeret's Gambit. Draw two cards, then proliferate. What is proliferate? Also, it's a three, and then you can pay blue or life. That's interesting. Phyrexian mana. Proliferate. Choose any number of permanents or players, and or players, then give each another counter of each kind already there. Okay. Okay. Okay, we've got four Bulgar uh, Golgaris now. Dream Strix. 3-2, three, two, two blue cost. It's a flyer. When it comes to of a spell, sacrifice it. When it dies, you get to learn. Okay. Interesting. We've got the fourth Agonizer Remorse as well. Ooh! A Mythic! Their eighth or ninth. Harness Infinity. One, three blacks, and three blue greens. Exchange your hand in graveyard. Exile Harness Inf <laughs> Exchange your hand in graveyard? What happens if you have more than seven? It doesn't say you get to ignore uh, how many cards in your hand. You're gonna need, you're gonna use this on specific moments, I guess. Well, I guess it okay. I guess where it's useful is this is the last card in your hand, or it's, you don't have that many cards, and you're gonna have seven plus, and you'll just rediscard whatever cards. Yeah, yeah. Any cards you have in your hand, just go back to the graveyard anyway. So yeah, it's not that bad. It's not bad at all. This is a way to get back to seven. That's not bad actually. Thinking about it now. We have seen all of these. And we got a second Professor Onyx. Cool, cool. You're only allowed to have one Planeswalker, aren't you? Well, one of each Planeswalker. Oh, out at a time, so I could just be able to cast her again, I think. I think? I think. Confront the past! Oh, look at that! Is that supposed to be your brother? No, no, yeah, Gideon. Oh, it's Gideon. It's not her brother. It's supposed to be Gideon. Why Gideon of all people? Why save me? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, War Spark happened. Okay, so... Choose one. X and, and black. Okay. Return target Planeswalker card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to your battle to the battlefield, which could be Onyx. Remove X twice. X loyalty counters from a target Planeswalker and opponent control. So, I can ruin someone's Planeswalker, or I can bring back my Planeswalker. And right now, the only Planeswalkers I have are Onyx and, uh, like... 
Uh, Luca. Those are the planeswalkers I have, I think. No, no, I have one more. He's the... Yeah, I think I have one more. No, two more planeswalkers. I have the twins, Luca, and her so far. I don't know how many planeswalkers there are. Wow, it's almost been... We're almost at three hours. Jeez, I guess I'll be building decks later. Like tomorrow or something. Defiant Strike, plus one, zero, until end of turn. Draw a card. For one white. Yeah, here's the last Deans. Wait, I guess there's more There's more than one Dean for red. So, uh, Uvilda, Dean of Perfection. Nasari, Dean of Expression. Okay, let's see here. So, 2-2 two, two for 2 and a blue. It's a Jin. Okay, cool. When you tap, you may exile an instant or sorcery card from your hand and put three hone counters on it. It gains at the beginning of your upkeep. If this card is exiled, remove the hone counter from it. And when the last hone counter is removed from this card, if it's exiled, you may cast it. It costs four less to cast it this way. So eventually, something's coming. For the Dean of Expression, it's a 4-4 for four, four, three and two red. Beginning your upkeep... Exile the top card of each opponent's library until end of turn. You may cast spells from among those exiled cards. You get to spend other people's cards. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. That's important. Whenever you cast a spell from exile, put a 1-1, one, one, plus 1, plus 1 on Nasari. I like that a lot. I'm liking Nasari for sure. Like for Uvita, eventually things are happening. So just tap them every turn. And you're going to have a, uh, a cheaper card happening every turn eventually, so that's not bad. But at the same time, Nasari being able to cast your opponent's spells could be very interesting. I think Uvilda is for winning. Nasari is for messing around. And maybe winning. Because Nasari does get stronger, too. Ah, some cards we don't have. Blood Research! 2-2, two, two, one black and green. Menace, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one on Blood Researcher. Start from scratch. Choose one. Start from scratch deals one damage to any target or destroy a target artifact. Okay, we had that earlier. Uh, if I'm right. All right. We are nine-tenths through all these packs. I'm really curious what cards we don't get. Got another rare wild card. That's our, like, fourth or fifth rare wild card. Oh, here we go. Cody! Vociferous Codex. A 1-4, cost 3. You can't cast permanent spells. Why would, why would you why would you get this guy? So for 4 tap, you get to add... Every mana? One of each? When you cast your next spell this turn, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery card with less mana value. Until end of turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put each other card exiled this way to the bottom of your library in a random order. So, if I understand Vociferous Codex, you're just casting mana like crazy. I might need some time to understand this card. When you cast your next spell this turn, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value. So less than four mana value then? Or wait, 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 wait. Oh, less than the spell you cast. To end a turn, you may cast the third card without paying its mana cost. Alright, that's uh okay, but you can't cast any permanence, so that means no creatures, right? No creatures, no artifacts. No enchantments. It's just spells and instances. I need to reread what permanents count as, I guess. I think enchantments are permanents. Stone Rain. Oh, this one we skipped an accident. Stone Rain's just... Oh, it destroys land. Okay. Expressive, expressive iteration? Oh, yeah, we've got that one. Oh, I wanted this one. Yeah, okay, I wanted that one. God. Yeah, Blood Mage, I wanted that one. Place in the center. Only a couple left. Oh, 
Ah, oh, finally get this one. One blue for a zero two flying. Magecraft gives it target creature control gets base two power until end of turn. Okay. <clears throat> Another vociferous. Zephyr boots. Equip oh it's equipment! Equip creature has flying. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, then discard a card. Equip for two. Right. One cost to put it in. Sign in blood. Two black. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. Five to go. Pigment storm. That's new. Three to red. Pigment storm deals five damage to target creature. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's control instead. Ooh, nice. That's cool. Just kill a thing and just does damage to the player as well. Archery comes, third one of that. We now have four explosive welcomes. Poet's Quill. Alright, so this is equipment. Uh, rare. One in a black. When Poet's Quill is a battlefield, learn. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one and has lifelink. One in a black to equip. That's not bad. Every time I get like a learn card, I gotta make sure I have something in the sideboard. And we have all these. We left. We've seen all of these. Wow, okay. Near the end, we're just seeing all the things. Field trip. Two and a green. Search library for a basic force card. Put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, and learn. Alright. That's a third or fourth of that. Final pack! Okay, we have an excess of Firstborns. So yeah, what happens when you get excess? Do you get anything out of this? Because we have more than four of these. Oh, Mage Hunter. We haven't gotten that one. Three, four. It's a horror. We haven't seen those many. Three and a black for a three, four. Whenever an opponent casts or co copies an instant or sorcery spell, they lose one life. That's nice. I like this already. Hell yeah. Because this is a spell happy uh, set. Ooh. And our last one's a duo. Pestilent Cauldron or Restorative Burst. So, Cauldron, artifact. Tap, discard a card, create a 1 1. So, create a pest. 1 and tap. Each opponent mills equal to the amount of life you gain this turn. Or 4 and a tap. Exile 4 target cards from a single graveyard. Draw a card. Okay. Yeah, I'm, if I find interesting is Black has some anti, anti enemy graveyard, which I find interesting. Restorative Burst. Three and two green. Return up to two target creature, land, or planeswalker cards from your graveyard to your hand. Cool. Each player gains four life. Exile Restorative Burst. So it heals everybody. But you get to regain some things. Okay. Oh, excess cards increase your wild card bar. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that just makes these better. Okay, and that is everything. Let's see what cards we did not get. So we can just go over everything else. So, uh, search. Is that hard? No, 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 no. Create a new deck and then I can search the library. The so search, um, I think I, uh, not crafting. So Strixhaven only. And include not collected. So, I guess let's just go down the line. White first. What have we not gotten? Ah, right, here we go. Well, there's some whites we didn't get. Okay, we didn't get Detention Vortex. It's an aura. Oh, of course, it's one of these. Okay. Can't attack or block. It's a one white. For three, you can destroy Detention Vortex. Only your opponent may activate this ability only as a sorcery. Oh! Oh, wow! Your opponent has an out on this. Okay, so you can temporarily just make something down. Academic Probation! Choose one. It's a 1 0 white. Choose a non land card name. Opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name until your next turn. Choose target non land permanent. Until your next turn, it can't attack or block. 
And it's an activated abilities can't be activated. So temporarily holding down, because it is a probation. Card we did not get. Uh, what the hell? I didn't want to go over there then. Also, there's a, quite a few cards we didn't get. A flip card we didn't get. Oh, okay. Ambrose and Shale. So we didn't get these deems. Do I want them is the question. 442 and 2 black. Tap. Put a plus one plus one counter on another target creature. Then Ambrose, Dean of Shadows, deals two damage to that creature. As long as it doesn't kill him. Another creature control with plus one one counters dies, draw a card. Alright, so I can also kill things if I want. Kill things to draw. Shale. Dean of Radiance. So 1-1. One, one. Oh, I'm covering the 1-1 one, one part. It's a 1 and a white. A flying Vigilance creature. Tap. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that entered the battlefield under your control this turn. Huh. Alright. I want Embros, I think. Over here, a bunch of cards we didn't get. Sparring Regime. Two and a white enchantment. Whenever you attack, put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature and untap it. Okay. Semester's end. Exile any number of creature target creatures and or planeswalkers you control. Uh, at the beginning of each uh, next end step, return each of them to the battlefield under its owner's control. Each of the, them enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. If it's a creature, an additional loyal and an an additional loyalty counter on if it's a planeswalker. So you could do it to yourself so you just have stronger things like uh and you just don't do any attacking. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's only to yourself. Okay. Devastating Mastery 2 and 4 white. You may pay 2 and, and 4 white uh for an earlier cost. Let's see here. So you do the cheaper one, your opponent chooses up the two non-line permanents they control and returns them to their owner's hand. If you don't do that, you just destroy all non-land permanents. So it's just a wipe. All right. Revel in Silence, Flame Scroll Celebrant. For two white, your opponent can't cast spells or activate Planeswalker loyalty abilities this turn. Exile Revel in Silence. Flame Scroll Celebrant. Whenever an opponent activates an ability... Oh, it's two one and one in a red. When an opponent activates an ability that isn't a mana ability, Flame Scroll Celebrant deals one damage to that player. One in red, Flame Scroll Celebrant gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Alright, it's not bad, not bad. Super cool silencer. A super cool silencer enters the battlefield. Use a non-land card name. Oh, it's a three and two for white and black. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with the chosen name, they lose three life and draw a card. You have to know what they want though. That's not too easy. You have to know what they're gonna do. It has to be non-land. Like, hmm. Vanishing first, one at white and a black. Exile target monocolored permanent. Interesting. Let's scroll this. Okay. Dramatic finale. So it's uh, four white or blacks. It's enchantment. Creature tokens you control get plus one plus one. Okay, so this is for, for summons. Whenever one or more non token creatures you control die, create a one, a two one. This ability triggers one only once each turn. So you only want to lose like one a turn. Super cool command. So two, a white and a black. Sorcery, choose two. Target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains flying until end of turn. Return target creature or with mana of value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Target player draws a card and loses one life. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. Those are all pretty useful. I'd want that. Sandrick, super cool. I like how it... Ugh. So it's a two five. You can't see it because I'm in the way. It's a three white and black cost. It's a uh, mythic elder dragon. It's flying. It's got double strike. At the beginning of your combat, on your turn, you may choose two things. Each mode must target a different player. Okay. Target player creates a two one white and black inkling. Target player draws a card and loses one life. Target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. Uh, I'm just okay. So I'm gonna give myself plus one plus one if I have a bunch of creatures, or a two one if I don't have anything. I'm going to have myself draw a card. I'm not giving my opponent anything. Unless I get them to mill themselves to death. Last ones that involve white. Blot out the sky. It's a mythic. X, white, black. X gives you... Great tapped. X tap two ones. If X is six or more, destroy all non-creature... Non-land permanents. 
So it does both those things? I'm hoping. Radiant Scroll Wielder. Uh, instant sorcery spells you control have lifelink. It's 2 4, 2 red and a white. A 2, a red and a white. 2 mono, red and white. Beginning of your upkeep exile an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard. You may cast it this turn. If you if a spell cast this way, would be put in the graveyard, it's exiled. Hoffrey Ghost Forge. This is a guy we didn't see. The 4 5, 3 red and a white. Spirit you control, get plus one, plus one, and have trample and haste. Oh, wow. So, yeah, this is... You want this, yeah, for spirits. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Except it's a spirit in addition to its other type. Damn! And when it leaves the battlefield, it's exiled. That's really good. Hoffrey... If you're going to go spirits, Hoffrey is important. He, you need him for that. Lore hold command... Three red and a white. Uh, choose two. Create a spirit. Three two spirit. Creatures of control get plus one plus zero and indestructible and haste no in a turn. Lower command deals three damage to any target. Target player gains three life. Sacrifice a permanent, then draw two cards. Okay. Relic Sloth. Four four. Three red and a white. Vigilance menace. Just a solid creature. Another dragon. Velo Mach Machius Lower Hold. Five red and a white. It's a five-five flying vigilance haste. Jesus. Whenever Velamanch's lower health attacks, look at the top seven cards of your library. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value cost mana value less than or equal to uh, Velamanch's um, power. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in random. I want that. I want that. Okay, since we did white, we may as well look at the ones that combo with it. So red or black. So let's look at red. Red or white. Should have looked at black. Uh, looks like we have all the commons. Do we have all the uncommons? No, we do not have all the uncommons. How many from here? Okay, so... We've seen all of these. Flame scroll silver. Oh yeah, we saw that. Okay. So, Grinning Ignis. So, a 2-2, two, 2 and two, two a red. Return Grinning Ignis to your hand... Owner's hand for one red. And you add... Wow. So if you need mana later, you can just take them back and you get two mana. Back to the sorcery. Fuming Effigy, 4-3, three, 3 and a red. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, Fuming Effigy deals one damage to each opponent. Leaves your graveyard. Interesting. Retrieving Phoenix. There's always a Phoenix. It's a 2-2, two, two, 3 and a 1, and 1 red. Flying Haste. As it, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, learn. As long as it's in your graveyard, if you would learn, you may instead return Retriever Phoenix to the battlefield. Not the biggest fan of that. Fervent Mastery. Three mana and two reds. You can cast it for one mana less. If you cast for one mana less, though your opponent can discard and draw as many cards. Search your library for up to three cards, put them into your hand, shuffle, then discard three cards at random. At random? I don't like that whatsoever. Ugh. Crackle with power. Triple X, red, red. Crackle power deals five times X damage to each of up to X targets. The fact it's triple X makes me feel like it should be a triple X card. Okay. That could be good. You can do five damage to five targets, uh, to three targets at least. I mean, to one target at least. So you can do 5 to 1 target, or you can do 10 to 2 targets? Yeah, you can do 10 to 2 targets, or 3 to, th uh, or or 15 to, to 3 targets. So this is something that's going to just kill something really hard. If you, as you get more mana. So I might want it. Frost Snarl, didn't get that one. Elemental Expressionist. 4-4 four, for four, 4 black uh, blue reds. Whenever you magecraft until in a turn. If the creature would leave the battlefield exiled instead, putting it elsewhere, and you get a 4-4. Four, four. Get a 4-4 four, four elemental. So, if you lose this guy, you just get another 4-4 four, four to replace him. Combination of studies. X, blue, red. 
X is exile the top X cards of your library. For each land card exiled this way, you get a treasure token. For each blue card exiled this way, you draw a card. For each red exiled this way, you deal one damage to each opponent. Okay. Interesting idea for that card. And we've seen all these. So let's look at the black. So we're done with white. And we get every common black. Add onyx twice. Sorry about that. Yeah, we got every common black. Ooh. I don't know why I decided to read every single card in the set, but apparently I'm reading every single card in the set at this point. Plum the for Forbidden. One in a black list. Yeah, three hours to read the entire set, basically. Plum the Forbidden. Instant as an additional cost to cast this spell. You may sacrifice one of more creatures. We do copy the spell for each creature sacrificed this way. You draw a card, you lose, and you lose one. I just draw more cards by sacrifice. I don't know if I want that one. Aurig Lore Mage. 3-3 three, three, for 2 and 2 black. Search your library. Tap it to search your library for a card. Put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. If it's instant or sorcery card, put plus 1 plus 1 on the Lore Mage. Okay. Interesting. A mythic. Search for Blex and Blex the Vexing Pest. So for two and a black, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put any number of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. You lose three life for each card you, you put into your hand this way. All right. Blex the Vexing Pest is a 3-2 that costs two and a green. Other pests, bats, insects, snakes, and spiders you control get plus one plus one. When Blex Vexing Pest dies, you gain four life. You need that for a pest deck. Ooh, I want a pest. I want a pest deck. Pest deck with that guy. Super cool silencer. One in a black. A white and a black. Oh, we read this one. Read that one. Read that one. Read that one. Right, okay, these are okay. White blacks. We've read the white blacks. These are green blacks. So we didn't get the snarl. Being a soul steeper. 1-3, a black and a green. Whenever you gain green life, each opponent loses one life. One sacrifice another creature, Dina Soul Steeper gets X plus X plus zero until end of turn. Where X is the sacrifice creature's power. So she can make you can make her kind of ridiculous. For a turn. Wither Bloom Command. Yeah, those, there's these commands for each uh each school. Target player mills three cards, then you return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Interesting. Restore target non-creature, non-land permanent with mana two or less. Target creature gets minus three, minus one, two on a turn. Target opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. All right, not bad. I want that. Calling ritual. Two, black and a green. Destroy each non-land permanent with two mana of value or less. Add a black or green for each mana. Each permanent destroyed destroy this way. So that can go against you or your opponent. Belladros Witherbloom. So everyone's getting another dragon, huh? A 4-4. Four, four, 5. Cost is 5. A black and a green. The flyer 4-4. Four, four. The beginning of each upkeep. Of each upkeep. You get a pest. Pay 10 life. Untap all lands you control. Activate only once each turn. So if I want to just have all my mana back. Bam. Yes, hubris. Um, hmm. I really want to make a pest deck, and this guy makes it even better. So I need Belladros, and I need Vexing, uh, the Vexing Pest. So I need both those guys, and guess who has, oh, uh, 28 Mythic Rares they can use? <laughs> I'm buying those guys. I'm going to get at least two of each of them. Four would be overkill. I need at least two. That puts my odds up well enough. So let's look at green. What did we not get out of green? We got a good amount. Jadzi? Freaking Jadzi? All right. Okay. That name sounds familiar, but I think they're new. 
Because I'm thinking of someone else. I'm thinking of someone else that starts with a J, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Okay, let's see here. So, Jazzy Oracle of Arcavios is a 5-5, five, five, 6, and a bl 2 blues. Return So, you can discard a card to return Jazzy to its owner's hand. I guess to save her. Her Magecraft is... Maybe I'm thinking of Jaya. If it's a non-land card, you may cast up by... It may cast it by paying one mana rather than paying its mana cost. If it's a land card, put it on the battlefield. Reveal the top card library. Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah, I might be thinking Jaya. So, John Z sounds really good, but it takes a while to get there. Six and two blue. Well, I guess if you get a lot of land, you can do it. Journey to the Oracle. Uh, two green and two mana. You may put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Then if you control eight or more lands, they may discard a card. If you do, return Journey to the Oracle to its owner's hand. Okay, so you're doing the green, and then you're doing the blue. So with green, you're making sure if you get you're getting enough mana to do blue. <laughs> so that's nice. That's useful. Leads to itself. Basic conjuration. One and two green. It's a lesson. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest at the bottom of your library, and then gain six, three life. Gain three life. Flex. Uh, Snarl. Okay, keep going. Dimex. Here we go. Double major. A, re a green and a blue. Copy target creature spell you control. Except it isn't legendary if the spell is legendary. Okay. Londrix Apprentice, a blue and a uh, red, a green and blue, two two. Magecraft, you may reveal a land card from among the. Uh, look at the top three cards. Reveal a land card from among them. Put that card in your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library. Kazmina, I yeah, I have Kazmina. Uh, it's down here because it's it's a pre-order only card, I guess. Hey, we didn't look at this. So Kazmina, Enigma Sage. So one, a green and a blue. She's two loyalty. Each other Planeswalker you control has the loyalty abilities of Kazmina. <laughs> Enigma Sage. Plus two for Scry. Oh god, that plus two is the big thing. Get them up sooner. But you're Scrying instead. Minus X. With minus X, you just put that many counters on a fractal. Minus eight. Search library for an instant sorcery card that shares a color with its Planeswalker. Exile that card, then shuffle. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Eight loyalty to do a blue or a green card? You gotta really want a specific card a lot. There has to be a specific card you really, really want for 8 loyalty. Okay, Kazmina can't appear. It's just that we got her from from the pre-order, and she's back here for some weird reason. Okay, all this left is red. All this left is red. And colorless. And whatever that gold symbol is. Okay. No, I read red, didn't I? Yeah, I read red. Uh, blue? Oh, it's left is blue. Blue. Blue's all left. Yeah, we've been going for three hours. Ah, oh, my throat. Let me just lubricate a second. Oh, good. We're not, we don't have that many left to read. Ah. Just these three, I think. Barang Befuddler. Flash. 2 1. Oh, yeah, Flash can be cast as an instant. So 2 1 for a 1 blue. When there's a battlefield, target creature and opponent controls is minus 1 0. Minus 0 until end of turn. Archmage Emeritus. 2 2 for a 2 and 2 blue. Whenever you cast a copy or an instant spell, draw a card. Tempted by the Auric. One, three, blue. For each opponent, can control of up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls with mana value three or less. Just take control of an opponent's creature? That's not bad. We didn't get the Frostboil Snarl. And that is it. Look at any artifacts we didn't get. Yeah, Hall of Oracles. The land, tap for colorless. 
one and tap and you can get a color. Ooh, that's not bad. I kind of want that. A rare. How many rares can I get? 66. So I could get this if I want. Tap, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Activate only as a sorcery and only if they've cast you've cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. I like Hell of Oracles. Team Pennant. Equip creature gets plus one plus one and has vigilance and trample. Equipping it to a creature is three. Equipping it to a token is one. Interesting. Mascot Exhibition, seven cost. Great. A two one and white, two one black and white. Uh, you get all the spirits. You get the two one gling, you get the three two spirit, and you get the four four elemental. You get one of each for seven mana. Okay, that's cool. That just seems useful in general to have, doesn't it? Dang. Oh, that's all of them. What's this? Oh, these are just the... Oh, these are the mixes. So, yeah, we've seen them all. We saw the other colors. Wow! And any land we missed? Yes, the Snarl... These two Snarls and the Oracles. Wow, that's everything. So, wow. Um, is there a way to see how many cards you have? No, there's no way to see. Okay, so... We got a good amount of it. I, I guess we can count it this way. Let's see here. Or not. Uh, one. Okay, so five. So ten. 20, 30, 40, 44 cards out of 200 and something. All right. Wow, we almost got them all with 99 packs. Jeez. Okay, so that's everything. I'll make decks in the future, and we'll have deck play and all the stuff on the side channel, which is at Scarf Plays. And yeah, I'm gonna play drafting and other things. We'll do a bunch of stuff on the side channel, which is Scarf Plays. We'll have the link in the description. But that'll be in a little bit. Uh, for now, I'm gonna just build decks and just play uh, while I'm at work, and then we'll go from there and just learn the learn the decks, and then we'll see what we do. I'm gonna try to see what kind of deck ideas I have, and then we'll try them out and record and things like that. So that was a very long video. I had fun. Hope you had fun watching. That's what's all about, isn't it? Having fun. And if you have deck ideas yourself, put them in the comments. I can try them out too. Thanks for coming by, and see you next time.